Swole Benji here. I am going to show you the fastest possible way to start playing Albion Online in 2022. Now, on my YouTube channel, I have over 260 different Albion Online guides and videos. Some of them might be slightly out of date. This is the 2022 version, and let's get started with it. This is the fastest possible start on how to level up your character and get a good, nice base of currency going so that if you die and lose gear, you are not completely out of the game. You can buy back in, as in you have money to buy gear back, and you're able to play longer, all right? So let's get started with the character creation. Now, it even says down here in the left, you can change your appearance and avatar, but you can't change your gender. So make sure, male or female, okay? Uh, make sure whatever, whichever one you pick that you are going to stick with, okay? And But your appearance, like your hair color, your skin color, all that stuff, you can change that anytime in the game. It's fine, so don't think too hard about it. Um, you can also change, you know, your starting little clothing here. It doesn't really matter. Like, some people think that wearing the tunic uh, is more armored than improvised, right? That's not the case. Don't worry about it, okay? Um, again, you can change all that. So let's enter a name. Uh, make sure that it is not an offensive name in any language. Albion is a very multicultural game, so having an offensive name that might offend someone from, say, the Philippines will get you name changed, possibly muted, possibly permanently muted. So be very careful with your name. Make sure it's nice and polite and something socially acceptable. So I'm gonna be Mr. Big Dude Guy Bro, okay? And uh, there we go. That name is not taken, apparently. Awesome. All right, so here's another thing too. You see down here where it says play tutorial, how it's not lit up, that would be very bad. And the reason why is if we enter the world, we enter the world completely naked with no items, no weapons, and no skills, no levels, which in this game is called fame, uh, you fame up, you don't level up in this game, all right? So what you want to do is click this play tutorial button. This is extremely important, okay? Make sure that this is highlighted yellow before you click enter world for the first time. All right, so now that we are entering the world, and again, this is all pretty much the same on cell phones too. You're going to wake up on the beach, and then the game will have instructions like how to move around. I'm not going to teach you how to do that stuff. You're going to play the tutorial the way... The game tells you to play it, so don't worry too much about that. But I am going to tell you some important things to do before you leave Tutorial Island, because once you leave Tutorial Island, you can never come back. So I'm going to outline all the important things that you should do while you are here, so that you will be better prepared when you hit the mainland. So let me just show you the map. This is Tutorial Island. You can never come back here. This is the mainland. Okay, the Royal Continent. It looks pretty big, right? But that's not all. There is the Black Zone, right? Um, <laughs> and then, of course, there's this middle area here, which is the Roads of Avalon. I'm going to talk about all that later. But for now, go ahead and play the tutorial. Take as much time as you need. And real quick, if you're trying to play this game... Oh, it's going down in seven minutes. Well, then. Um, if you're trying to play this game at a certain time, it does go down for maintenance for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, currently, it is um, 9.53 UTC, so at 10 o'clock UTC is when the servers go down, all right? Just, just so you know, that way, there's always people in the comments that wonder how come they can't log into the game. That is why. Anyway, I'm going to cut back to you in a little bit once I get to the important parts of the tutorial, so I'll see you then. All right, when you get to the part of the tutorial that wants you to skin foxes, and you can do this at any time on Tutorial Island, you don't have to do it, do it, you don't have to do it right now. But go ahead and skin at least one to two extra foxes because you're going to make a bag, which the tutorial does not teach you how to do. And when you hit the mainland island, if you already have a bag, you're going to be able to carry a lot more stuff and it's going to make your life so much easier. So just skin a few extra foxes and I'll see you in a bit. When you get to the part that wants you to harvest cotton, make sure to grab some extra ones that uh, the quest does not ask for because your hide and your cotton is how you're going to make the bag so just go ahead and grab a few extra nodes here and uh, just to be sure you can throw the rest out what you don't need later it's completely fine now real quick while the servers are down i want to talk to you about different zones because once you leave tutorial island you get to pick one of the five zones so let me educate you on which zones to pick and why so first up is step cross step cross is part of bridge watch okay Bridge Watch's main export, as in if you choose a gathering route in this game, you will have access to Hide as the main source, with Fiber as a secondary, and then Metal as the third one, okay? 
Uh, so what this means is if you want to focus on skinning animals, then you should choose a bridge watch But let me tell you a little bit more about bridge watch. Okay, the prices are fair. They're not the cheapest They're not the most expensive. It is a high population area But the cool thing is is faction warfare. All right, so um, This is the test realm. So the faction stuff is just kind of imbalanced right now It shows Limhurst is pretty much taking over the whole zone, but again, it's the test realm. No one really plays right now so Bridgewatch has one of the strongest organized faction armies. If you join the Bridgewatch faction discord, there are hundreds of people at all hours of the day just on there coordinating attacks and taking over territories and just destroying everyone in giant blobs and warfare, okay? So if you if you like safe PvP where you don't lose your gear, or if you want to risk a little bit of gear in these red zones, I'm going to talk about that later, then Bridgewatch is going to be your place to be. Now, the reason I don't recommend gathering in this game is because this game has a huge bot problem, okay? One guy can run hundreds of bots off of cell phone farms, okay? And bots may or may not be getting banned too often, but they, botting is a problem, so anytime you gather, even if you have the best gathering gear in the game with the highest leveled spec, you won't make too much money compared to just killing mobs in the open world or doing dungeons. And I'm going to talk about all that later, but let me finish talking about each zone. So if you want to go to Bridge Watch, when you get to pick your island, you would go to what's called Step Cross. Because I'm at Step Cross now, it's not on this menu, but Step Cross is for Bridge Watch. Now, let's talk about Martlock, okay? Martlock is known as Highland Cross. Martlock's main export is stone. It also has some wood and metal. The thing is, in the tutorial zone, you cannot harvest stone. So if you want to choose Martlock as your starting zone, you'll have to do it from the very beginning. You can't get to tier 2 or tier 3 in the tutorial island. The reason why you would want to pick Martlock is if you want to join a very big Zerg guild with over 20,000 people to safely live in the Black Zone. Now, I heard recently that um, things might have changed. That guild is called Arch. They... They're the biggest guild in the game, so if you want to join the biggest Zerg army in the game and get lots of benefits, then you want to choose Martlock because this is their their home, essentially, okay? okay? The next one up is Thetford. Now, Thetford is the lowest populated city, and Thetford's main export is fiber. All right, you can level up fiber on the tutorial island, which is by, you know, picking cotton. Um, so Thetford, uh, again, there's not a lot of people that represent Thetford. Uh, so I don't really know too much about it, but if you want to just avoid, like, if you want to be in the lowest pop areas in the Black Zone and in the Royals, then Thetford would be your choice. Next, oh, um, I'm sorry, let me show you. Thetford is uh, Swamp Cross, by the way. Then you have Mountain Cross, and this is known as uh, Fort Sterling. Now, the cool thing about Fort Sterling, this is where the majority of um, English-speaking players dwell. But also, Fort Sterling has the best deals in the world. So, marketplaces are all separated based on the cities. If you're in Fort Sterling, you can't buy products from Bridgewatch unless someone transports it from Bridgewatch to Fort Sterling. Fort Sterling has the cheapest prices in the game. However, this also means that if you get loot and sell it at Fort Sterling, you won't be making as much money either. Fort Sterling's main export is metal. Okay, which you can level up on Totoro Island. It also has stone and fiber. All right, next up is uh, this. I would say this is Asia's favorite place, which is Forest Cross. This is Limhurst, which is probably the second strongest army in the game. Um, this has a lot of um, Australians. This has a lot of people from Indonesia, the Philippines, India. They all like to come here. And when I first started playing, I came to Limhurst, okay? Limhurst is, is mostly wood, okay? But it also has stone and hide. Lim like, I recommend Bridgewatch or Limhurst as your starting zone. There are lots of people in Limhurst. It's, um, it's possibly the most populated zone is Limhurst, okay? Out of all of them. Uh, however, Bridgewatch has the better uh, faction PvP. Um, Martlock has the best black zone representation, okay? Um, and then, of course, you have Carleon, which is here in the middle. You you really can't come here as a newbie. I mean, you can, but you can't, un unless, until you rank up, you can't do these red zones. They're too high level. Uh, these are all dangerous full loot PvP zones where if you uh, die in them, you lose your stuff. Okay, Carleon has the highest prices in, in the world, by the way. So, with that said, 
most of my followers, most of my YouTube subscribers, they all come to Bridgewatch. My guild operates out of Bridgewatch. My guilds, rather, my, my alliance of over 2,000 people operates out of Bridgewatch. Okay? Um, but other than, that, other than that, if you want to join Arch, you join Martlock. And if you uh, want to play with your bros, then go to Limhurst, okay? So let's get back to the tutorial now. All right, so once you've done the part of the tutorial where you refine your items so that you can begin crafting, and what that means is you turn hide into leather, you turn wood into planks, and so on and so forth. Because you harvested those extra foxes and cotton, you come over here to this character, which is the tool maker. You met this person earlier in the tutorial. Now, on this little sidebar here, you see my mouse cursor on the top left, right here? Click this little bag icon for accessories. This is not taught to you at all in the tutorial. Click novice bag, and it's going to take 12 cloth and 12 leather. Go ahead and craft just one of those. That's all you need. And then right click it and you'll put that on it. And that's going to give you an extra 20 kilograms of, of maximum load. This means you can carry more stuff. Don't worry about crafting the cape. You're going to get one later in the tutorial. While you are doing combat in the tutorial island, there's a few good habits I want you to start practicing right now. The first one is always be around your mount, okay? So to mount up and, and to dismount, you press the A button or you hit your mount button on your cell phone, right? You always want to be within range of your mount at all times, okay? So what this means is if you walk outside of this circle, your mount disappears. This is very important for later. You don't want your mount disappearing. So what you want to get into the habit of is you dismount near enemies and then you start attacking them like so. Okay, and then um, also for those that don't know, you can actually fight multiple targets at once. Uh, so you can kind of get used to doing that as well if you plan to use an area of effect weapon, which I'm going to talk about later and the best weapons to use to progress as fast as possible. But always try to stay around your mount, okay? This is very important for later in the game. Also, another thing is for PC users. Get used to using right click to move. You can right click and hold to spin around like so. Use left click to target and to attack, okay? Now, some people will say that you should not use left click to attack because you might accidentally attack a player at some point. But uh, once you learn the controls, that doesn't really matter. Once you reach the part of the tutorial that either wants you to buy upgraded gear or craft it yourself, this is what you're going to buy. And this is what will set you up for later. You don't have to exactly follow this step, but it is what I recommend if you want to be able to do this absolutely dumpster monsters later on. What I mean by that is just instantly kill them. You hop off your mount, you blast down a really tough, high level, high HP boss mob, killing it near instantly and get back on your mount before anyone notices, okay? And this is what you're going to buy. You're going to buy the novice's broadsword, okay? But remember, we're using this to become a crossbowman, okay? Which is the highest burst damage and highest fastest DPS weapon for single targets in the entire game, okay? So you're gonna buy the broadsword, and because you're using a sword, you have to buy the shield as well, all right? Now for armor, you're going to be using cloth armor. There are three armor types in the game. You have cloth, leather, and plate. By wearing plate armor, you are more tanky, but you deal significantly less damage. Leather is a good in-between, but the reason we are using cloth armor is because we are going full burst. This will level you up much faster than anything else in the game. So we're going to go ahead and buy the Novice's Scholar Robe. So we have a cloth robe. Now we need boots and a helmet. For boots, you're going to buy leather boots because that's going to lower our cooldowns, allowing us to cast more spells. So the leather boots are the Novice's Mercenary Shoes. All right. Now... Normally, you would wear a cloth helmet, but for the sake of Tutorial Island and the start of your journey, you're going to wear a plate helmet so that you unlock the ability to wear plate armor without having to actually go back and wear Tier 2 armor when you're Tier 4. I'm going to explain that later. So for now, you're going to buy the Novice's Soldier Helmet. So what this does is you have one piece of plate armor, one piece of leather, and one piece of cloth armor, all right? Now with all of this, put it on and you'll be ready for the next step. All right, and I'll see you then. Once you reach this part of Tutorial Island called Distraction, the quest is called Distraction, it says to call the ship by lighting a signal fire. And it has you go right here. So you're going to go ahead and light the signal fire. Now, this is a very important step. You see this doorway right here with this big circle? Do not go through this door. 
and wow, they added music to the tutorial. That's pretty cool. So what you can stand in the circle, but do not go through this doorway. Once you go through this doorway, you can never ever return. And there is still business to be done here on Tutorial Island, all right? So do not go through this doorway until you do some of these options that I'm about to show you. Because you do not want to leave this island until you are absolutely ready because you can never return here once you are done. So let me go over a few things that you can do. Now one thing that you can do, which I don't recommend, is you can continue to fight mobs here. So you can just dismount and kill mobs all you want until you are completely comfortable. You can even fame up your sword's combat abilities here since you do have tier 2. And I'm going to press B and access the destiny board, okay? So, if we look here at the Journeyman Warrior, alright, you once you reach this little line here, you can use learning points, which is what we will do. You're going to receive learning points for leaving Tutorial Island, okay? Um, and then that will access tier 3 swords, which will give us access to the crossbow, which is how we're going to power level extremely fast. So if you want, you can sit here and get this experience bar, this fame bar, all the way to this 20% little notch. If you want, I don't recommend it because we can get experience faster off of Tutorial Island. The second thing to do is if you want to be a gatherer, you can do the same exact thing, the same exact thing for your gathering, okay? So for me, my favorite zone is Bridge Watch, which means I would go to Step Cross, and if I... In a world where there's no bots and the prices on leather is good, I would want to level up skinning. So I would go and skin foxes in the forest zone of this tutorial island until my skinning is tier 2 or 3. It's up to you, and I would refine the hides into leather until my refining was also leveled up. That's another option, but there is one other thing that we need to do because we want to make money. We want to enter into the world of Albion with some nice pocket change and there's a few things to do um there's a few ways to do that okay you see here on the main area right here there's this big circle of rough stones and a lot of people are going to do this there are bots that farm this okay and it's always busy because i have made several guides with hundreds of thousands of views that tell people to do this if you have lots of free time go ahead and harvest these rough stones for as long as you can. You can carry about 900 of these, okay? Uh, and this is the easiest, best place in pretty much the whole game uh, because they respawn very quickly. You just sit here, you just run around in the circle, and you gather rough stones. This is a very good early game money maker, okay? But this will take a lot of time. Now, let me show you. I have one rough stone here. Its estimated market value is 92, okay? Nothing else I can get on Tutorial Island will match this. So if you take 92 coins, which is, in this game, it's called silver. The currency is called silver. Gold is a premium currency. We'll talk about that later. 92 silver, and you can carry about 800 of these before you become over-encumbered. Um, maybe a bit more with the bag. Uh, you're going to make quite a lot of money. That's like sixty to 80,000 starting out, which will buy you all of your starter gear. It will even allow you to power level much faster. But there's another faster way to do this. And that is the donkey we're riding, okay? So if you look here, the, the novice's mule has an estimated market value of 4,481, which is actually a little bit more expensive than what it used to be. So what you can do is you go here to this little vendor, and on Tutorial Island, you can buy them for three coins. Um, three silver, I'm sorry. You can only carry so many mules, though. This is the faster way. You won't make as much money doing this, but you'll get off Tutorial Island faster. So um, I'm going to buy, you can only buy them one at a time because they weigh a lot, okay? The reason I'm not overweight is because it's in my mount slot. But when I put it in my inventory, also let me put on the cape. Uh, once I put this in my inventory, look, look at my weight. So this little icon here, this little guy says 14%. That is how much carry capacity I have. So I'm going to go ahead and buy a donkey and that puts me at 58. I'm going to buy another one. Now I'm at, well, it says... Um, it can't transfer it because of my weight limit. But if you click this little tab, this is completed transactions, and you click take item, it will then force it into your inventory. Now I'm at 102%, okay? So if you look at this bar, from 100 to 130, you will slow down by 20%. So that's what this looks like. I'm a little bit slower now, and that's okay. But we can continue to carry more. So let's buy another one. Um, same deal. It's going to put it in this little tab. We're just going to hit take item. Now we're at 146. Now we move 50% slower, okay? And we're going to do another one. Alright, same deal. 
All right, now I'm at 190%. Look how slow I move. Okay, but now I have 17,922 silver worth of mules, okay? Um, and if I want, I can toss out some of this stuff, right? Um, because I don't plan to use it. Uh, but for your sake, you should keep all your tools, okay? It's very important to keep these. Like, this leather is worth 300. It's, it's not, not too good. I'm just going to throw these out and get my weight down just a little bit more, okay? This is a tier 1 sword. I no longer need these items. Uh, tier 1 armor. Again, you don't need these items anymore. And then I'm going to stack and sort. There we go. So we got it down to 181%, okay? Uh, and we're going to move very slowly. But if I wanted to buy another one, it's going to put me over 200, which will make me unable to move. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that for you right now. Um, actually, I think you can... You can maybe still move i forget if they changed it or not let's find out right now so now we have five mules and look how slow i am moving okay so you can you can choose how much that you want to um how slow you want to actually move okay this guy's doing it too you see it's a smart thing to do but grab as many as you're willing to carry and then slowly walk your way to that gate we talked about earlier now, for the sake of this video, I'm only going to do three mules, okay? I'm not even going to do the stone. Um, I'm an experienced player. I also have 20 different characters that I can rely on for money, which I'm not going to do for the tutorial. This is completely independent. I'm also going to throw out the stone. So I'm going to use just a starting money of 13000 which it's I'm actually going to sell it for cheaper than that. Just to be fair, maybe 10000 Just Just to show you, it's still possible in case the mule economy tanks from this video and there's like a big influx of new players, all right? So bear with me. Now, here's an important thing too. Go to your key bindings and you want auto run to be a very accessible key. I use the button above the tab key for auto run. I don't know what it is on cell phones, but that is what I use. And this will allow you to traverse much more easily and not cramp your hand from holding right click the whole time, okay? So go ahead and bind that to your favorite button and then use it all the time. So, when you press auto run, you will just run in the direction that your mouse is. I'm not holding down right click. So, get used to binding that and get used to using it. If I just press right click, my auto run will stop, okay, until I reactivate it. Anyway, get used to using auto run. Oh, there's one other thing I want to educate you about. You see the, these bars? The yellow top bar is your life. The middle blue bar is your mana. And the bottom yellow bar is is your mount's HP, okay? So if I aggro these guys, uh, you can see that they're they're attacking my mount and not me. Once the mount dies, you are dismounted. And if I am dismounted while, you know, severely overweight, I will move even slower than that. So now that I have crossed this doorway, I can never return. So I, I literally, oh, they, you know what? They fixed it. Hey, they fixed it. That's cool. Or maybe it's whenever you pass this circle. I think it might, might be this circle is when the point, there's like a point of no return. Let me see. Yeah. See, uh, the, the door collapses and you can never go back. So um, make sure that you have everything that you want to carry with you to the mainland before you leave because you can never travel back here ever again. Now, once you get here, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you get here within 15, like before 15 minutes of playtime, you are stuck here until you hit 15 minutes. Uh, okay, or no, I'm sorry. I think it's no, it's it's five or fifteen minutes. I forget. Anyway, so you're gonna accept this quest, okay? And then you're going to pick your mainland. So I recommend Step Cross. That is Bridge Watch. That is my favorite because I like faction PvP. Faction PvP allows you to PvP with the best items in the game, and all you'd pay is a repair bill. You don't lose your stuff, and faction PvP is very profitable. It's it's the only reason I still play this game honestly, and I have over five thousand hours. 20 characters, hundreds of islands. So I like Bridgewatch. Bridgewatch is the strongest faction for faction fighting. Uh, if you want to run around in a big Zerg army in the black zones, then go to Highland Cross and join Arch. But um, yeah, I'm picking Step Cross. Now, this is a very important step, okay? You want to make sure that you listen to this part very carefully. Once you arrive off the boat here... You see this character that has nothing on him? He didn't do the tutorial, so he uh, he has nothing. But we have an inventory full of stuff. We got level 2 um, stuff. Now, here's the thing. This guy is going to give you a quest, so we're going to go ahead and accept that. That's fine. Okay, but this is the very important part. Do not talk to this guy until you are ready to play for a very long time. Because once you talk to this quest giver, okay... 
he is going to activate free three days of premium. Premium in this game is uh, you can pay real money. I think it's like 10 US dollars uh, or uh, the current price is I think 8,751,000 silver. Okay, it's quite expensive for a newbie. You get three free days, okay? Or if you have money, you can buy a whole month. It's fine. But for those three days, you will basically get double experience and double silver. So do not accept this quest until you are ready to sit down and play for a very long time. Do not do this before school. Don't do this, you know, if you have a busy weekend or there's holidays or you have family outings or you can't sit down and play this game, okay? So at this point, you would just park this character, go make some more characters, Having multiple characters is very important. I'm going to teach you why later. But as soon as you talk to this guy and you hit continue, you see this premium extended three days. There we go. Now he's going to give you more quests. Okay. We're going to click. Okay. We're going to hit. Okay. I already know what that is. We're going to click combat in the middle tab here, and we're going to do the basics and then we're going to accept. Okay. All right. Now let's at this point we can sell these mules so we're not so slowed down or we can save the mules until we hit the main city and sell them for more so i'm going to actually do that i'm going to open this little chest here if you if you press in you open your map and you see this big chest only you can access this and anything that you put in here is yours no one can steal it okay like i can't see any this is a chest this is your personal chest all right so I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to left click all this stuff that I'm not going to use into the chest so that I am at, you know, 0% weight. I can run around freely. All right. Now, there's one other important thing that I recommend. You don't have to do this, but go to your chat. OK, I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to click this little top arrow and I'm going to go to advanced. OK, and I have general here selected. I'm going to turn off looking for group because you will. That's all you will see. So I'm just going to turn that off. See, it does not have the yellow circle around it anymore, okay? Then I'm just going to close it. Now I don't see this blue text anymore that's looking for healers for dungeons and so on and so forth because you will just be bombarded with it, okay? That makes your chat way more clear. Now I just want at this point, you can talk to the world, okay? But be very careful what you say. Do not offend anyone. Do not even use a preschool insult in the chat because if you do, you can be permanently muted, which will really mess up your account and mess up a lot of things because you need to chat in this game at some point. You will need to communicate with people. So do not mess up and call someone like a pipsqueak or a dweeb or a buster, okay? No matter how, like, don't even call them a food on. Don't call them an ice cream cone. Don't call them a hot dog, okay? I got a mute for calling someone a hot dog once. It's not fun. Don't do it, okay? <laughs> All right, from here on out, you can continue questing. I highly recommend that you complete the quests in the starting zone so that you get a little bit of experience. Right now, it wants me to click on this portal and start a Royal Expedition, which is a tier three. It's gonna give you some silver, a thousand, right? And 3000 for the daily, right? And I'm gonna talk more about that later doing dailies. Uh, you can also talk to this guy and he's gonna give you quests on a gathering and teach you a little bit more about gathering and crafting, uh, which is also recommended. And uh, yeah, so go ahead and do your quests and I'll see you back in a bit. Now, once you do a few quests, you can talk to him and there is a who is this option. So click this. This is very important. This is for early money. Click a shady proposal. All right. It's going to say speak with the shady card on and step cross. So go ahead and click accept. Now, if you look, he's right here in this little corner and this is going to get you one gold, which is the premium currency in the game. You need 3000 to get premium or you can sell the gold for silver, which is what we will be doing. So we're going to go ahead and talk to him now. And um, he just wants you to stand near him for, um, I don't know, what is it, five seconds? Do, 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 just wait five seconds. It's pretty simple. It's kind of silly. Um, but he gives you a gold coin. So there we go. We completed that quest. Now, here's the important thing, okay? You click this little icon, this little coin icon that says gold market, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to sell your one gold coin, okay? So sell gold for silver. We're going to press one in this box. And we're going to receive 2,915 silver. So we're going to sell that. All right. And there we go. So we have 2,915 silver uh, combined with what we looted from Totoro Island is 3,105. We haven't sold our mules yet. Okay. And this is important because once we leave this little small town, we can actually put on a tier three or a tier four bag, depending on how much you advance. And you will be able to carry these mules much more easily without moving so darn slowly. Now, I only took three with me, you know, to make it more challenging, but you will probably carry eight to 10 or I don't know how many. 
however many you're willing to carry. Now, for this video's sake, I am not going to cover gathering and crafting because I believe gathering is a complete waste of time due to bots, and crafting is a huge waste of time until you have hundreds of millions of silver and tons of islands and alt accounts that you can use to begin actually making a profit from crafting. It is a huge endeavor, but if you do do this quest, you will receive focus, which the game will explain what focus is, and you receive focus because you have three days premium active, which you can spend on basically making free money. Uh, in this case, I'm going to teach you later on how to make furniture with your focus so that you can just cash in on it and get some extra silver. That way you're not farming as much and you could afford more stuff. But for now, continue questing by doing combat the basics. All right, once you are doing this royal expedition, you are put into an instanced dungeon all by yourself. And let me tell you right now, it's okay if you die. You will not drop your items, you will not lose money, the repair bills on your starter equipment is it, it doesn't matter okay but i will tell you um you want area of effect attacks for the little baby mobs okay uh and then just kill everything that you come across if you want you don't have to you really only need to kill the things listed here on the side but it is handy to go ahead and kill them because it does level you up now i do want to mention too that if you don't want to spend time using your armor's restore ability you can go ahead and eat a carrot soup now these little carrot soups, they're not worth too much if you sell them on the mainland, they're worth 300, which is really jump change. Um, so go, feel free to eat one of these, they last 30 entire minutes, okay? If you want, you don't have to if you want to penny pinch, but I just recommend you eat the soup because it will make you uh, traverse the dungeon much faster. And remember, you can pull multiple mobs because you are a sword and shield user, you're slightly tankier than other people, okay? And all you gotta do is just left click to auto attack and then spam your Q's ability. I'm using the second Q ability because it hits everything in a circle around me, okay? Uh, make sure you pick up all the silver. You get these little checkpoints. If you die, you get teleported back to the checkpoint. You don't have to start all over again. And mobs do not respawn in this. So uh, if, you man, if, if you're still learning to play and you're not quite uh, as an advanced gamer, just make sure you kill one of these guys before they kill you. And then when you respawn, you only have to fight one other mob, okay? Uh, so I'm going to meet you after I finish the dungeon. At this point in the tutorial, you will probably advance a reaver level if you didn't spend a lot of time in Tutorial Island killing things, okay? So press B, and let me show you what reaver levels are, okay? So if when you press B, you will be centered right here. Go to the left, you'll see Trainee Fighter. Keep going to the left, and you're going to see Journeyman Reaver, right? Now what this means is that you deal you now deal additional damage to tier 3 creatures and you have more defense against tier 3, three creatures okay this is very important for later okay because this is basically a way to prevent newbies from going to the most dangerous zones in the game and killing mobs there because you could technically do it and you still technically can do it but this makes it much easier to do so if you click here this is adept reaver okay you need to kill creatures to gain fame which is experience points and then you will be able to fight tier 4 monsters. This is your main goal right now when you are killing mobs, to level this up. It will level up automatically. Now let me let me show you real quick, let me just kill this uh, fire starter here. So when I kill, and I'll also make sure you learn to dodge spells by the way. You see that red circle on the ground? Don't stand in that, that hurts you. Okay, so when I killed it, I got 27 of these little red ribbon icons. That is fame. Okay, and to advance, and I'm, I'm fighting this guy while I have the menu open. Uh, I need 7,547 of those red ribbons to advance to tier 4. I know that sounds like a lot, but we're going to be able to advance extremely quickly. As of November 2021, there was a major change done to the game, which allows you to rank up, or I'm sorry, fame up incredibly fast. This is another important thing too. You see where it says Journeyman Cloth Armor Fighter? And it's going to show Leather Armor Fighter and Plate Armor Fighter. This is a very important step that you need to do. When these pop up, on the right side of your screen, you should have this little list here. These three armor pieces and your warrior will all say 20%. Now what this means is when you reach 20% of something, you can use learning points to advance it to the next level. You don't have to, but I highly recommend it, okay? So we're going to start with Journeyman Warrior. We're going to left click this icon. And that's going to open your destiny board. Now for two learning points, you can advance, you can skip 80% of this experience grind, okay? You cannot do this for Reaver, but you can do this for, for Warrior and your armor stuffs, okay? And your weapons, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to click learn, and that will unlock tier 3 weapons. Because we did the quest earlier to uh, sell that one gold for silver, we can now buy a tier 3 crossbow 
in the little starter town we're in, and we will be able to kill mobs incredibly fast, which is what we're going to do immediately upon leaving this dungeon. Now, you want to do this also for plate armor fighter, so I'm going to left click this, it's going to teleport me over, or you can just scroll over to it, but just click the buttons, it's faster. Click learn, and we have 96 learning points. Don't be afraid to spin these, that's what they're there for. Now we get a leather armor fighter, do the same thing. And this is unlocking tier 3 armor for us, okay? So now we can wear all tier 3 cloth, leather, and plate. Now remember, your adventurer level and your reaver level cannot be leveled up this way. You have to manually do it. Now your adventurer level is uh, access to mounts and additional better bags and capes. Okay, so don't worry about that right now. That's not a big deal. All right, so just continue with the dungeon as normal and I will get back with you. By the way, when you're doing these little instance dungeons, look out for this tiny little chest here in the corner, okay? If you have this dungeon layout, it's right here in this little tiny room on the side. Go ahead and bust open this chest, and you're going to receive just a little bit additional silver. It's not a lot, but it does help. I can't click on it until this guy dies, um, so we're going to go ahead and kill him. He dropped 8 silver. This chest dropped 519, so you don't want to miss it. That's a good chunk of money for the start of the game. Also, you see this little flaming circle on the ground? When you are in a normal dungeon, which is not something we're going to focus on in this guide because it's it's uh, insignificant now due to patches, but when you see this on the ground, this means that you are about to enter a boss room. In a normal dungeon, this means the end of the dungeon, all right? But for this sake, this just means that there is a boss creature. So if you look at this monster here, it ha there's a circle underneath him. This, and, and if you look at his uh, little avatar up here, this signifies that he is a stronger mob than normal. So this means it's a boss fight, okay? You, you'll be able to take them. Don't worry. Just go ahead. Just jump in. Just dive in. I want to show you another good habit that you should be doing, okay? So the space bar is also your auto attack. Instead of left clicking an enemy, what you can do is I'm going to left click this enemy to target him. Now when I press space bar, my character will walk towards him to swing. Now I'm not going to actually do that. I'm going to hold right click so that I am constantly moving. And I'm going to spam my space bar button so that I am able to what it's called orb walk. This is a MOBA term from League of Legends and Dota, where uh, you can move while attacking, sort of. So I'm going to spam spacebar while holding right click, and I can move through and around and dodge this character while I auto attack every single time that it is off cooldown. This allows me to stay mobile. This is very important to learn. You don't have to do this to kill the mobs, obviously. They're pretty darned easy, uh, but it's a good habit to get into. And then what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll demonstrate it on the boss fight for you. Again, this is a habit that you absolutely want to, um, you know, make a normal thing, okay? Now I'm, gonna, I'm holding right click so I dodge that whip attack. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill the ad. Spam spacebar while I hold right click. Target him. Spam spacebar while I hold right click. I'm going to use my abilities when they are off cooldown. I'm not going to use my E spell until I have three charges. That's how swords work. You can read the tooltips if you want to learn more. And there we go. I'm able to dodge his attacks while moving, while keeping up my DPS. And he's uh, he's doing that, so I'm going to run away now. And he is down. All right. Now, there is an advanced trick, too. If you want, if you're going to be playing for a while, um, if you don't finish this dungeon, you can actually get to Tier 4 and then do a uh, the same thing but the Tier 4 version to receive a Royal Sigil uh, worth 40000 But the game will go ahead and give you one of these later on in a quest anyway, so it's not super important on your first day. All right, next up, once you turn in that quest, you will receive a Tome of Insight, which is this thing. Don't use it yet. Do not pop that thing yet. You're going to pop it later. I'm going to tell you why. But for now, continue questing. We're going to go back to Convent and do the open world. And what this is going to do is it's telling us to equip Tier 3 equipment and use a dungeon map, okay? So we're going to go ahead and accept that. And what that will do is, um, well, we have to actually get to Tier 3. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Because we have 8,000 silver now, we're just going to go to the market and buy our uh, tier 3 set. Alright, so here's what you want to buy. You left click this person right here, or just around them. There's going to be a lot of people around them. If you press in, it's the little golden hammer. This is the marketplace. Now, if you want, you can actually travel to Bridgewatch. It'll only take you a few minutes, and you can get a better deal sometimes. Not always. But if you if you just want to save time, you can buy it here. And we're going to search for crossbow. And we're, we're going to... This is the marketplace, by the way. Uh, at the top left is the search bar, so just type cross, and that's going to filter everything named crossbow. And you're going to look for a journeyman's crossbow, okay? Uh, these are actually a little pricey. I'm going to left click it and see what the normal price is. It's normally 2100 So these are actually being undersold right now. We have 8000 This is going to be the main weapon you want to use, okay? 
So, what I'm looking for now is I'm looking at the border of the weapon, okay? This is a normal quality crossbow, which is fine for 1999 I'm going to scroll down a bit and see if I can get a better one. This one is 2128 For sl It's slightly stronger because it's a good quality. You see this little silver border around it? I don't want to pay 120 You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and buy this good one here. All right, so now that's going to put it in my inventory, and then I'm going to buy tier three uh, armor. So to do that, I'm going to click category. I'm, sh I'm this is for your learning purposes, okay? Click category, scroll down to armor, and hover your mouse over it. Then scroll to your right and click cloth armor, okay? Make sure that there is nothing in the search bar. Make sure that all of this stuff is reset. You can click these little reset the filter settings button. This little circular arrow. Uh, to reset everything. You're going to be doing that often. Now you're going to click this drop down tier button and click tier 3. And then you're going to buy a journeyman scholar robe. You can do the same thing. Look for that silver border if you want. Uh, it's 30 more for this for the little border around it. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing now, but we're going to buy leather shoes. We have tier 3 selected and leather shoes selected, and we're going to do the same thing. Let's look at the price. 709 for some boots. Scroll down a bit for a silver one, 714. That's pretty cheap. It's only five more silver for a better quality boot. So we're going to go ahead and buy that. Now for helmets, we're going to go ahead and buy a cloth helmet. Okay, we're changing it up now. Um, you don't have to do this. You can actually use whatever helmets you want. But I'm going with cloth because I like to restore mana. And I'm going to show you later why that is. It's also really good for extra damage. Uh, but for now, we're just going to buy the Scholar Cal Tier 3. Now, crossbow is a two-handed weapon, so I'm going to press I, um, and I'm going to right-click all of these. And there we go. We are now Tier 3. We could also, at this point, if we wanted, buy a Tier 3 bag, a uh, Tier 3 cape. You don't need to, but if you want to. And by equipping these Tier 3 items, look at our inventory. We have this Journeyman's Dungeon Map, Tier 3. So this is the cool part now. Uh, first off, let me allocate my abilities. For crossbow, you want this one, the Sundershot, okay? Now... Our main ability will be Explosive Bolt. We're going, we're going to unlock this very quickly. I'm going to go over that in a bit. For Helmets, we're going to go ahead and use Force Field, and we're going to click a Passive, which is more damage. Then for our Armor, we're going to click the Healing One and this Passive for more damage. For the Boots, we're going to use Refreshing Sprint, and what this is going to do is lower your cooldowns, which is really cool. I'm going to explain that later. And for your Passive, you're going to click Balance Mine, which is Damage and Defense. The reason we use leather boots is so that we have faster cooldowns. It's not super important for the leveling method I'm going to show you, but I want to show you another trick. I don't know if this still works, but at one point we're able to abandon this guy, this guy's quest. Let's go to combat and then click open world. Okay, and now we're going to abort this quest. Okay, I get to keep this tier three map and then I'm going to click it and I'm going to accept it. And then it's going to uh, give me another map. So you can rinse and repeat this all you want, but once you complete this quest, you can never get another tier 3 map ever again. And you won't really need these, but I'm going to tell you why that you want to do this, okay? So we're going to abandon, and then we're going to accept, and then we're going to do this, you know, just maybe like five more times, okay? We want to we, we have a lot of maps. And the reason for that is, is because these maps are going to spawn a dungeon in the open world... And other players may or may not steal it from you. That's right. Other players can see the dungeon that has been spawned, and they can enter it and kill the boss and get the loot and the experience for themselves. So we're just going to get a bunch of maps here, just in case that happens. And also, it's just fun to have. It's like a little legacy item that, like, as you play the game, like, my main characters do not have this, because this did not exist when I played Albion. So if you want to have these as, like, a little nostalgia hit, maybe, you know, just keeping your inventory to show off to people... So we have eight maps. There we go. So here's how the map system works. You're going to left click the map. And when you click use, it's going to spawn a dungeon on the map for you to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to click use. Now you'll see it open my map automatically. And it's got this little green icon over in Prospector's Hope. We can see that we are in step cross. We're the little yellow circle here. So in order to get to Prospector's Hope, if you look at the roads, you'll see that I have to travel east out of town. And that's going to put me in Prospector's Hope. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's mount up. We have our crossbow. We've got our food. Everything's good. And I'm going to leave through this exit. You can also see the green circle there. And that's going to show us where to go. All right. So I'm just going to ride my mule. 
And don't worry, we're going to get a, a horse pretty soon. Horses are much faster than mules. They can't carry as much, but hey. Now, if you look on the map, it's all the way over here, okay? So we're going to ride our mount all the way to this, this edge. And I will see you there. Now, as you ride along in the open world, you might see this little green portal cave thing, and when you hover your mouse over it, there's a little opening door. This is a random solo dungeon, because it is a green color that is a solo dungeon. You can enter this and kill mobs, and there's bosses and loot and chests inside, right? They're, they're okay to do for a beginner, but due to the patch changes of this game, dungeons are no longer the best way to advance our character quickly. Alright, but... Again, we're riding over to this open world dungeon map. A map spawn dungeon gives you additional loot and experience. So that's why we're not going into these random dungeons that we see along the map. And the reason we're not stopping to kill all these random mobs, which you can do, is because other players can see this dungeon as well, and they can enter it and they can steal it from you. Now do note that if you are running and a mob hits your mount, you will slow down. But if you continue running, the mob will leash, which means they will exit combat and go back to their starting position. So don't be afraid to run by mobs. It's fine. Your mount has a good amount of HP. You're not going to die. If you get dismounted, they're not going to kill you. So you can see here, this is the, uh, if we look at the map, we are in the green circle. This is the dungeon. So this is the correct dungeon to enter. But let's say there's two dungeons in this circle. How do you tell which one is the map one and which one is not? Well, if you click a mob, we're going to run forward through the dungeon. This is completely randomly generated. There is no map. Okay, but it's very linear. Don't worry, you won't get lost. Okay, we're going to find a mob. We're going to left click them. Now, if you click a mob and you see this little sword icon that says enemies in this dungeon are 16% stronger, you are in the right place. You are inside the map spawned dungeon, okay? So, uh, these mobs are a little more tough, and as a crossbow user, you're going to have to get used to the abilities... Uh, auto fire, everything locks you into place. Now, crossbow is very good at dealing high damage, okay? So we're just going to snipe him and look at the damage. Um, <laughs> we just melt things. Don't be afraid to use your abilities. All right, so I'm going to get through this dungeon now. Have fun with du the dungeon. You might get some really good loot. It's completely random what you receive in here, okay? Oh, by the way, now that you have your tier 3 gear, you can go ahead and use this Tome of Insight, and that's going to give you 2,000 fame for every single piece of equipment you're wearing. All right, and what this did is this just pushed all of my armors and weapon here above that 20% threshold. So you know what that means? Click the button and use those learning points. And congrats, we just unlocked tier four equipment, right? And so we're gonna go ahead and learn tier four there. And then again, learn. This, uh, this is very imperative. Tier four is considered the beginning of the game. This is where you start specializing in the different types of like robes and different types of crossbows. Right now, we just have the basic crossbow, but now we can use a crossbow. We can use an energy shaper, which is like a space laser, a heavy crossbow, the siege bow, the light crossbow, the weeping repeater, and the one we will be using for this video, which is the most powerful single target, highest burst damage weapon in the game, the bolt casters. Now, um, depending on how popular the video gets, this might be a little expensive, especially if you're in... Bridgewatch, but luckily for Bridgewatch, it is the crossbow crafting capital of the world, which means it should have the cheapest crossbows in the game, which is good for us. All right, so continue through the dungeon now that you've unlocked tier four. And from now on, the only thing you're going to spend your learning points on is you click crossbow fighter here. And once this hits 20%, use eight learning points. Again, we have 76 left. You're only going to spend learning points now on crossbow fighter. And the reason why is at level 3 you unlock Explosive Bolt. This is your main damage dealing. This is an AoE instant cast, very low cooldown, very low mana spell that just blows everything apart, okay? But the most important thing, the reason why you're putting it in the Crossbow Fighter is so that you can unlock uh, the t level 10 tier 5 crossbows and the, and the tier 6 and so on and so forth. This is the only thing that you will be putting your learning points into now until this thing is maxed out, okay? Also, if you see this, uh, it's a random dungeon buff, so go ahead and grab it. Uh, in this case, I got Reflect and Restoration, so when these enemies hit me, they're going to hurt themselves, and I'm going to restore HP at a very quick rate. Now, you may be thinking, if you're a new player, why, are you, why am I using the crossbow? This thing sucks. I was dealing more damage with the sword, okay? Once you hit level 3, the, everything changes. And once you learn these abilities and how they interact, you will deal, you will clear things extremely quickly. Once you have bolt casters, I'm going to show you just how fast things die. Alright, so, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and fight the boss here. I'm going to lower his armor, then I'm going to snipe him. 
Okay, and I actually pulled a lot of mobs here, but that's fine. I have this shrine buff. This is not a danger at all. We have the shrine buff for a good 20 more seconds. I'm just gonna dodge these skills and shoot my crossbow at these mobs. I'm gonna kill the adds before I kill the boss because um, I can always run away from the boss and reset. The adds will also reset. It's completely fine. All right, so I know as a new player, you may not be able to pull these kinds of things off, but once you play this game for a little while, I'm gonna dodge that. Uh, you will be able to pull this stuff off. These things are so easy. Like, this guy can't, like, <laughs> Big Spencer can't even fight me, okay? And, uh, you're gonna see this dude a lot if you do dungeons, but this video isn't really gonna cover dungeons. Right in the beans. So, you killed the boss. You get the loot. You open the chest. This is completely random. I got 2,000 silver, okay? Um, sometimes there's items, sometimes there's not. You can go ahead and click the silver bag and then click use or use all, and that's going to give you the silver. Pretty cool, because we're going to use this silver to buy tier 4 items. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and complete the dungeon, and I will see you then. Now, as you kill mobs, you've probably noticed a weird number that floats above mobs' head that looks like yellow keys. If you look here, this daily bonus has yellow keys. I have almost collected 1,200, so when I, do, when I do this... That is going to give me a Tome of Insight, which I want to save for later once I have the Tier 4 armor equipped, because we're going to want to use that. Uh, so real quick, I'm just going to kill a few mobs and show you what that looks like uh, so that you know when it pops up. So that gave me 24 keys. Um, I should be able to get it here in just a bit. There's another 14 there. And uh, this is actually a large group of mobs. I'm going to knock them back a bit. Um, kill this guy, and it should give it to me, right? I only need 10 more. And you'll notice that I'm taking a lot of damage, so I'm just going to run out of combat here. This is completely fine. Alright, so I ran away, and that puts me out of combat. I can use my restore. So we completed the daily bonus, okay? So what that means is I can click this button that says Adventurer's Challenge. It's also up here in the menus. And I can click Claim. That's going to give me this Tier 4 Tome of Insight. Now, every single day, when I complete this, I will receive 50,000 keys. And when I reach 600,000 points for the month... I can receive a free mount, and the mount changes every month. And, um, you know, a little avatar skin. You get these little chests too, but you have to have premium to collect these. You cannot use your free three-day premium. You have to use the actual unlocked premium. But don't worry. If you follow my instructions, you will be able to receive premium in anywhere from 15 to 20 hours of gameplay. It's very easy to get. Remember, once you receive your learning points reached for your crossbow fighter, you're going to use your learning points. So now our crossbow is level 2. At level 3, that's when we get explosive bolt, and that will incredibly, that is the biggest speed boost we're going to receive, and I'm going to show you in just a little bit. Alright, I want to give you some tips because a lot of people may struggle with this, especially cell phone users, since apparently it's harder to play crossbows on a cell phone. Alright, so for the early game, before you unlock explosive bolt, you are slightly vulnerable. So what I want you to do is make sure that you're eating food or using your regeneration mend wounds um, before you pull any mobs every single time, okay? You can take this slow. Hopefully other players don't steal your dungeons. But if you see this number one number down here change to a two, that means someone has entered your dungeon. But this dungeon's entrance will have disappeared after 90 seconds, I believe. So it really depends on the time of day you play and where your dungeon spawns. But we have seven other maps anyway. So here's what I want you to do. Before you even engage these enemies, your snipe ability outranges their aggro range. So what you want to do is pick a target and then snipe them, or you can combine it with Sundershot into snipe so you deal more damage. So I'm going to do that to the big guy right now. So I'm going to Sunder him and then immediately start charging snipe. That's going to deal tons of damage to him. He died. One shot. Okay, now I have these two guys on me. I'm going to press Q and let the whole thing finish because that does an explosion. Now I'm going to press D and knock these guys away and I'm going to focus this target down. Now I'm just going to attack this guy. I'm going to hit him with a Sunder Shot into a Q, which again, it just melts him. So now I'm about half HP. I have not eaten food, but if I did, this would be restored. I just press R instead and I'm going to restore my HP. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. And... Uh, if you don't hit a tier 3, uh, I'm sorry, level 3 on crossbows, also dodge every attack you see. When you see that line on the ground, move out of the way every single time. Do not try to tank it. We are in light armor. It's not worth it. I have 7 seconds left until I can heal again, and I'm going to make sure that I heal before I do the next dungeon pull. Now, remember this little flaming circle I told you about? This means this is the end of the dungeon. Because this is a random dungeon, these can be up to 3 floors, okay? Okay. All right, I'm fully healed. I'm going to kill these adds before I aggro the boss. So I'm going to Sundershot into Snipe. This will kill him straight up. 
And down he goes. Easy. So now I'm going to kill the little guy here with a Q ability. I'm just going to continue attacking. I'm going to knock both of them back. Q him again. He's dead. I'm going to sunder this guy. Use Sprint to run away a bit. And then I'm going to attack him with a Q ability. And that kills him. So he's down. So now I'm free to fight the boss. I'm going to go ahead and show you the boss fight. Because a lot of new players struggle with fighting these bosses. So same deal. I'm going to open with Sundershot into Snipe. Alright, so now I'm going to attack. I'm going to wait for him to do a spell. I'm going to move out of the way, and then I'm going to do my own spell, which is my Q ability. I'm going to move out of the way of that. My crossbow actually knocked him back and interrupted him. So again, I'm going to Q him every time it's up. I'm going to use my W every time it's up. I'm going to run out of the way of that, because I do not want to be hit by that. I don't want to be hit by this either. I'm going to use my run ability to avoid him. Okay, now it's back into, into combat mode again. I'm going to hit him with the Sunder. I don't want to snipe him here because I'm gonna I would take that hit, so I waited. Now I snipe. Now he takes big damage, hit him with the Q again. I can actually knock him back if I want. And interrupt his spells. Again, I'm gonna run away. I think I could I could tank it. I barely tanked it, okay? That was a risky move. But we did take him out. Now to open these chests, for those that don't know, you have to clear 90% of the dungeon. If you are if the game does not let you open this chest, it's because you left too many mobs alive. You can't skip mobs in a dungeon. So let's see what we got. We got no items, just silver. That's fine. We got uh, 4,000 in total from this dungeon. Now, I'm going to press the A button to exit the dungeon. I don't have to run back through the dungeon to leave. Just press A and you'll teleport out. Uh, now, because I've been in this dungeon more than 90 seconds, I can't go back in. So only leave the dungeon when you are complete with it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, turn in this quest now. Oh, by the way, that boss fight, it knocked our crossbow combat uh, above 20%. So I'm going to use those learning points. Actually, no. Uh, my bad. This is co crossbow combat specialist. This is considered spec. The higher level this becomes, the more damage you will deal with crossbows. Don't level that up. I'm sorry. You want to level this up instead. Crossbow fighter, which is uh, obviously above 20%. So we're going to use our learning points. And now it's level 3. And now we have unlocked explosive bolts. So I'm going to press I to open my inventory, left click the crossbow, I'm going to change auto fire to explosive bolt. So let me show you what explosive bolt is, okay? Explosive bolt is an area of effect explosion on a two second cooldown. It looks like this. And what you do is you can just kill mobs incredibly easy. I'm going to attack this cougar and this moa bird and I'm just going to spam Q onto the ground like so. And uh, look at them. Look how much damage it does. And it's doing 180 every two seconds. And I could use my boot ability, which lowers my cooldown. So look at this. This takes two seconds to recover. But if I use this in conjunction with my boots, look how fast it recovers. I can continue to shoot this. And there are more ways to reduce this cooldown even further so that we can just, just blam, 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 blam. It's like you're shooting a rocket launcher, okay? This will allow you to farm incredibly fast. But also, now that we're out of the dungeon, I want to talk to you about open world mobs. Not animals, okay? Ignore the animals unless you're skinning. What you want to look for is open world mobs like this, okay? If they have a glow to them like this guy does, that means he's worth, he's worth quite a bit of experience. So I'm going to dismount, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sunder into snipe, and then I'm going to use my Q abilities on him, and down he goes. That was 1,664 fame from that one mob. That's more fame than that boss monster did in that dungeon, and he dropped 500 silver, okay? Uh, so, this is, the, this is the new thing to the game, okay? This is why I'm making this video, is for this exact specific purpose. Open world mobs now give you way more fame and silver and loot than dungeon mobs, okay? That is the 2022 edition of this guide, okay? So... All of my previous videos have said to uh, do dungeons, do tier 5 dungeons. That is no longer the case. Also, this guy just dropped an item. Let's see what we got. We got tier 3 boots, which sell for 700. We're going to yoink that and pick up the silver. 200 silver. We've almost earned a whole silver bag, and we've killed two mobs. Two heckin' mobs, guys. Okay? And uh, crossbow fighter is already 9% of the way leveled from two mobs. Because we just leveled it in our menu, right? So, again, you can just dismount, and you can just hit him with Qs, hit him with the W and no Q again. Now, the thing is, when you dismount, this is a new addition to the game. Used to, when you dismounted, you had a 10 second cooldown. But now, if you do not dismount around a hostile player, you can use your weapon abilities instantly. And that's what, that's where this, this guide gets real juicy, real good. Because you can just dismount and dump on a mob, right? And we're going to get to the point where we can shoot a lot of these Q abilities, because I want to share with you why we're going to continue to level crossbow fighter, okay? So, 
You unlock a passive at level 6 called Well Prepared. After 4 spell casts, you reset the cooldown of your first slot ability. So this means you can double shoot the explosive bolt. And then later we're going to have a cape, which lets us also reset the cooldown, so we can shoot three of these basically in a row. And if we use any other abilities like our boot ability or our armor ability, which we will be using later, we can even shoot a fourth one for basically free. So while you're going back to your quest giver, just kill any open world mobs that you see. You don't have to kill the animals because they don't give the additional fame that the humanoids do, okay? But just make sure that on your way back to town, the starter town, that you're killing every mob that you see because that fame and the silver that they drop is incredibly worth it. And uh, once we advance to tier 4, which I think we might already be there, uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, crossbow fighter, there we go, level that up. Booyah, there we go, we're level 4. Two more levels and we can <laughs> double shoot these. I am very excited. Now, Expert Reaver... Um, is for tier 5. So we are already tier 4. This means we don't need to be here anymore. Let me talk about tiers real quick too. Oh look, another player. Um, oh wait, he's up here. Um, so let me talk about tiers. We are in a tier 3 zone. If you press Ilm, you can see these little three notches. That is Roman numeral for 3. This is a tier 3 zone. Because we have the expert reaver unlocked, or I'm sorry, the, the tier 4 reaver unlocked, we can go to this tier 4 zone and fight mobs. Okay, but we can't really, we can go to tier 5 zones right now, but we would deal way less damage, and we would um, take way more damage from the mobs. It's just not worth it yet, okay? So we're going to go back to town and turn in the quest, and we're going to pick up our loot, and we're going to go to the main city, and we're going to equip our tier 4 equipment, which is going to dramatically increase our kill speed and power level, alright? And that is going to make us farm extremely efficiently. And then we're going to go to a tier 4 zone. And I'm going to show you exactly how I want you to farm. So that you will advance to tier 5. And then we're going to go to tier 5 zone. And then after tier 5 is where things start getting risky, okay? Anything above tier 5 is a full loot zone. This means other players can kill you and take your stuff. But I'm going to show you ways that you can make a lot of money. So that if someone does kill you, it's not that big of a deal. And that the stuff you will earn from farming those zones is more than enough to cover the costs of dying. And the more you die, and the more you experience death in this game, the better of a player you will become. So it's kind of like a like a tax on newbies, I guess, right? Like, if I go to a red zone, I might get killed by, like, ten dudes. There's nothing I can do about it, right? But if it's just one guy, I can either kill him or escape. So I'm going to go ahead and turn in this quest now. And um, after that, it's basically telling you, here's the open world. Okay, the big city. We're going to go to the big city, ready as ever. And this is going to give us a Adept's Royal Sigil. This is very cool. Because we can... This is for crafters, by the way. This is to craft royal armors, which you don't need to do as a newbie. You won't be doing this for quite a while. But you can sell this thing for 41,000 silver, okay? Now, I want to tell you right now, if you did the rock farming method, you will have 80,000 silver plus this 41,000 plus this 11,000. You're going to be basically... You're going to have like a... Almost 150,000, which is more than enough to buy several sets of gear in case you die in a red zone. Alright, so we're going to take that quest now. And then we're going to take everything out of our storage here. Okay, and we're going to bring it to the mainland. Now, remember that we move kind of slow while we do this. But, we might be able to buy a better bag so we can move a bit faster. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. So I'm going to hit these little reset arrows and clear out everything. And I'm going to go to accessories and bag. I'm going to see if there's a tier 4. There is tier 4 bags, but I can't use it. See how it's red? I don't have the explorer's level yet, so I'm going to go to tier 3. Um, this one's a 1,000. Do I want to sink a 1,000 silver into a bag? I personally don't, because uh, I haven't sold these mules, and um, I just don't want to do it. So I'm going to take my time and uh, trot my way to Bridgewatch. So to, to do that, I'm going to press Ilm, and I can see that the main city is right here. It's li listed as a tier 1 zone. Uh, this means it's completely safe. By the way, blue zones, there's a color coding, means completely safe. You cannot be attacked by players. The only way a player can attack you is when you are faction flagged. I will talk about that later on in this tutorial. Yellow zones, which are tier 5, means that you can be attacked by players, but they cannot kill you. They can just make you kneel on the ground for 3 minutes and damage your gear. They can't take your gear. They cannot kill you. You will not lose gear. Red zones mean that you can be killed by players that are declared hostile. 
If you are in a red zone, you will see a number in the bottom of your of your screen that will show the number of hostile players. In this case, I'm in a blue zone. There are 85 real players in this zone right now. In this one little cluster, there are 85 people running around doing stuff, okay? Uh, but in a red zone, this will show the hostile number of players only. Now, and then finally, when you leave this continent and you go up here to the black zone, this is where everyone can kill you regardless. Everyone is hostile all the time and they can attack you without warning, okay? Uh, that's what the, the colored zones mean. Anyway, I'm gonna get to bridge watch and I'm going to show you uh, how to sell the royal sigil and the, the mules here. And we're gonna get some money and then we're gonna get some tier four equipment. By the way, uh, before we get to town, I wanna share with you a scam that newbies fall for. Someone just fell for it. You see here in the chat, um, Ebe, Ebe Delina has bested fish BLR in honorable combat and they received 14,833 silver for their victory. So what you need to do is you need to go to game settings and you need to go to social, I believe, and scroll down um, and you need to auto deny dual requests. What will happen is you'll be clicking the middle of your screen or tapping your phone. Someone will request to duel you with a wager. And if you click yes, they will steal all your money. So make sure you turn that off because I don't want to see you guys losing all your silver that you worked so hard for um, right out of the gate because there are people that will run up to you and challenge you to a duel. And if you're just clicking the middle of the screen and you click yes, you will just accept a duel and they could it could be for all your money, okay? And you don't want to lose your money to some some guy that has like really good gear and just just turn it off, okay? You can always turn it on later if you want, but for now, turn it off. Oh, look, he, this guy just did it again to the same person for 9,999 silver, okay? To, to me, I'm an experienced player with billions of silver. It's not a lot of money to me. But to a new player, that is that is a bankruptcy right there. That person got double scammed. I, I hope they watch one of my future videos so they don't get scammed. Anyway, be careful out there, guys. The first time you enter a main city, it's going to be very overwhelming. 281 players are just in this area alone. There's so many weird squares on the map and you don't know what's going on. I'm going to explain it. Don't worry. Don't just calm down. It's fine. All of these little white squares you see are player owned shops. Now there's something that I want you to be careful about. Okay. I want you to see this little icon. It's like a table with like a red little map on it. This is the repair station. I want you to notice that the owner is called system. The access rights is public and the um there is no tax on this thing okay usage fee is is all zero okay now if you see one of these icons that isn't in this spot okay um this means it's a player owned repair station and it will have the rate set at 999 percent like taxes and what that means is that if you repair on that bench you're way overpaying and that's a common scam that these uh these towns run so be careful of that okay um, and again, just like the newbie area, this is your marketplace, which is a separate room because of how many people use it. And then this is the bank, which is also a separate room from the main town. But other than that, you have your Expedition Master. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And then a bunch of other things. Don't worry about those right now. For now, go ahead and talk to this person here. It may be different depending on which city you join. Um, but go ahead and talk to them. And complete the quest and they're going to basically have you run around the town to get to know everything like they're gonna talk about the island vendor which is a premium thing but for now I'm going to teach you basically how to sell things okay so the first things first is to sell things we need to repair so we're gonna go to the repair station remember this is the right repair station this is not player owned this is owned by the city there a player is not in charge of this we're gonna click this guy and we're gonna click repair all for 731 don't worry go ahead and pay it you can't sell things if they're if they're semi-broken. So we're going to hit pay. And that repaired everything we're wearing and everything in our inventory. Alright. And also we have the Royal Sigil. So we're going to go ahead and sell that right now. I'm going to teach you two ways to sell things uh, depending on the market. So I entered the marketplace. And if you looked on that map on Bridgewatch, that was the Golden Gable. So I am now in the marketplace. There are 355 people here. If I open the map, I see the gable again. Uh, gavel, hammer, whatever. And there's just a blob of people here, right? But if you hover your mouse over them, you'll see the little cog wheel. Just left click and you will talk to the, the marketplace vendor, okay? I'm going to clear all of my search parameters at the top by clicking these little arrows. It's very important. Then I'm going to click the cell tab, okay? 
and that's going to list everything in my inventory. So I'm going to find that royal sigil and I'm going to click sell. Now, there's a little arrow here on the right. I'm going to click this because this is going to give me some information. Now, on the left is what people are currently selling the sigil for in this town. The lowest listed auction is 40,000 silver. If I wanted to buy this, this is the cheapest I could pay. Now, what I can do is click sell order, and that's going to give me an amount that I can sell this for. I can set any amount, but for it to actually sell, I want to undercut this. So what I would do is I would click this minus sign and undercut this by one penny so that my listing is at the very top. So if someone buys this, they will pay 39999 for it. Or if you look at this buy order section, there is a guy willing to buy 60 of them for 38002 silver each. So for that, I would click sell and it will automatically sell it at the highest bidding price. And someone already sold one because it's at 59 now. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to lose 1,999 silver to quick sell this, but I don't have to pay any taxes, where if I did sell order, I have to pay 600 for the setup fee, which is going to be way more if I don't have premium active, okay, and the premium tax. So that is, I'm paying 1,800 right now to do a sell order, or I can lose 100 silver by selling it this way. So I'm going to lose 100 silver, because it's just 100 silver, I can kill one mob and get that back, it's okay. So I'm going to sell that, and there we go. Now we have 48,000 silver. So at this point, we can also do the same for the mules. You can see here that it's it's a bigger uh, uh, jump here. 2,101 to sell it immediately, or 3,295. I'm just going to sell it for the sake of it. So I earned 6,000 from the mules. If you got the rough stones, let's check the rough stones, okay? Rough, rough stone. Right now, those are at 82 each. So if I wanted, I could either quick sell one rough stone for 69, or I could list 800 of these for 81 and make a huge bank. Okay. Uh, so if you spent if you spent time in the in the tutorial island getting rough stone, you're going to be a, a little bit more loaded than me. But I have 54,000. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out my inventory. These tier three items I don't need. I don't plan to use tools because I'm not going to gather. I don't need the tier two items. So I'm just going to quick sell all of this. Um, to get it out of my inventory so that it is all nice and cleaned up. But if you don't, if you want to keep this, then by all means, you can put it in your bank. Don't carry it all around with you. Just put it in your bank, okay? You can see these only sell for one to two to three. They're complete, completely like pointless, right? So there we go. We ended up with fifty-five thousand one hundred and fifty-six. Now I want to show you my inventory. I have the Tome of Insight because it has this icon, this golden coins with a no symbol, it means I cannot sell it. Same goes for these Journeyman maps, okay? So, the reason we haven't used this tome yet is because we want to equip our Tier 4 items and then use it so that it will level those up instead. Alright, so in this case, I'm going to now search Bolt Cast. And we can see Bolt Casters are running about 15,000 right now. Pretty expensive, but we're not going to buy those. Let me explain enchantments, okay? When you hit Tier 4 and higher equipment, you can use... Uh, enchanted items instead. You see these three little slots at the bottom of the icon? This means it can go up by three enchantment levels. So if I click this enchantment drop down box, I can do enchantment level one, two, or three. Now if I go enchantment three, you can see that these are 100,000. I can't afford that. But what this means is because tier four is the highest leveled equipment I can currently wear, uh, each enchantment is a extra tier. So essentially, this is a tier 7 bolt caster in terms of power. Sort of. Alright? But I can't afford it. So I'm going to go enchantment 2. This is 35,000. That's a little more reasonable. But again, that's kind of expensive. So I'm going to go to enchantment 1. It is 16,000. Enchantment 0 is 15,800. Enchantment 1 is 16,000. It's like a thousand more for an entire tier. These are equivalent to tier 5, okay? And because this one is good quality and this one is normal quality, I'm going to buy the good quality ones, okay? And there we go. We now have bolt casters. So I'm going to right-click that. That puts it on. I'm going to select Explosive Bolt and Sundershot. And once this unlocks, well prepared, we're going to be doing so much damage. Now I can actually clear my search parameters and then sell this crossbow uh, for half price. Or I can list it and wait for it to sell. I'm just going to go ahead and quick sell it for the sake of the video. You don't have to. If you're patient, that's fine. So now we have our tier 4 equipment, now we're going to go category, or no, I'm sorry, we're going to go to the search parameters and I'm going to try, type cleric robe. 
And here we go, Cleric Robe. This is what I want you to wear. It's a cloth armor, so you deal more damage. I'm going to select Enchantment 1. Now, you'll notice this jumped up by, like, 4,000 in cost. Okay, Enchantment 0 to Enchantment 1 is about four to 5,000. I'm going to tell you right now that's a complete ripoff. Um, so in this case, I'm not going to buy Enchantment 1, because all this does, all armor does, this does not make you deal more damage from Enchantment 0 to Enchantment 1. This just gives you more armor and more max HP. You can see here, Enchantment 1 gives me 368 additional health, whereas Enchantment 0 gives me 302, so I, get, I gain like 80 HP. It's really not worth it. So I'm just going to buy... Uh, this one's actually 200 more than this one. I'm going to go ahead and just buy it, okay? And then put that on. I'm going to go ahead and select... You now have an ability, by the way. Tier 4 armors have unique abilities. Cleric Robe gives you the ability to become immune to damage for 1.5 seconds and deal additional 30% damage. Also, I'm going to use the passive for damage because that's what we're all about. All right? Now for the boots, we're going to clear our search parameters. We're going to go to Tier 4. We're going to click Category and we're going to go to Armor and then Leather Shoes. And we're going to buy the cheapest one listed, okay? In this case, it's Hunter Shoes for 1,000. We're just going to go ahead and buy that, okay? We're going to right-click it to put it on, and we're going to use the ability Refreshing Sprint, which is available on any leather boot. And then we're going to use the pa uh, passive for uh, damage and defense. All right? And then finally, we need our helmet, okay? For helmet, I recommend Scholar Cal. So I'm going to clear my search parameters by clicking these little circular arrows and type Scholar Cal, uh, and then I'm going to select Tier 4. Same deal, they're only 900. The reason we're using a Scholar Cow is because you can either knock back enemies, or if you need mana, you can use Energy Shield, which is also a defensive ability. It's extremely useful. You won't really need this, though, but it's just nice to have, okay? And uh, Cloth Helmets are always amazing for damage uh, later on. So I'm going to go ahead and put this bad boy on, and I'm actually going to use Energy Shield, because I don't. I'm good enough at the game, I don't need to knock around mobs. Players? Sure. But mobs, I'm just going to use the energy shield for mana, okay? So we are all set on our equipment now. Now, you'll notice we haven't replaced our cape or our bags. We're going to do that later. Capes are actually very expensive. I'm just going to do a price check with a Care Leone uh, cape, which is 53,000. That is our goal. We're, we're going to raise 53,000 silver so we can get one of these capes. And what this cape does is um, every 37 seconds, we get a free instant cooldown uh, on our Q spell. I'm going to go ahead and clear my search results. Once again, I'm on the sell tab. I'm going to go ahead and sell these now and get a little bit of that silver back. And there we go. We are ready now to head out uh, to a tier four zone. But real quick, I'm going to use this tome. Now that I have my equipment equipped, it has to be worn for it to give you the fame. This is going to give me 10,000 fame. I'm going to click use. And we just received 10,000 fame. All right. And then I'm going to find crossbow fighter. Again, I'm going to click Learn. We are now level 5. We just need one more level in this, and we have our cooldown passive. Now, because I use the market, I am currently dismounted. I'm just going to hover my mouse over the mount area. Uh, I guess I wasn't... Oh, no, I'm still mounted. Never mind. They fixed it. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to ride out to a Tier 4 zone. So I've left the market. And um, I don't want this in my inventory. It doesn't take up any weight, but it does take up an item slot. So I'm going to find the, the bank. There's the bank. It's down here. Again, it's a separate area because there's so many players, right? And um, there we go. The chest is in the middle of this big blob, okay? So just left click in the middle of them and you'll open your bank. Put that stuff in there. Uh, hit stack and hit sort so all your inventory items go to the top. We have 37,000 silver to play with. Uh, we're not quite tier 4 yet. We can't replace our mule with a tier 4 horse yet. No, we can actually... I'm sorry. Horses are tier 3. Let's go get a horse. I forgot. So go back to the market. You can go to the market from the bank. Right? They're, they're connected. And it's a little laggy, and I'm on a beast rig. And I'm running at the highest possible graphic settings. You don't have to do that, though. So we're going to go to category, and then you're going to go to mount, and you're going to go to... Riding horse, not armored horse, none of this other stuff. Don't worry about it right now. Go to riding horse. And we're just going to buy the cheapest one. It doesn't, the quality of a horse depends on its health. So normal quality, 1,004 HP. Good quality is 1,004 also. 
I think, oh, it's more carry weight. This is 56 kilograms and this horse carries 53, so three extra pounds. But this one's cheaper for 10,000. Go ahead and buy it. Yes, that's right. We have upgraded our mule to a horse. I'm going to press A and dismount my character. Then I'm going to right click the horse and put it on. And now I'm going to sell the mule. So, again, goodbye mule. You don't have to sell the mule. If you don't want to, you can put it in your bank. It's fine. Yes, that's how banks work. They apparently store animals. I'm going to mount up, and now that we have a horse, we move faster. Now, uh, horses are way faster than mules. You're going to want a horse, okay? Uh, because you want to ride around the world and kill things. So at this point, I'm back into the main city. Everything's repaired and sold. We are ready to move out. Now, I want to talk about Expedition Master. Because we are Tier 4, we can now do the Daily Expedition. But because the first quest in the game does it for you, it is considered your Daily. So we can't do this today, but... When the server resets, we will be able to do this. So you're going to click this portal, and then you're going to click Adept's Individual Expedition. It's going to show you that you receive 2,000 silver upon completion, and in 21 hours and 52 minutes, we can receive an Adept's Royal Sigil, which is worth, what, 40,000, and an additional 2,000. And then inside the dungeon is another one to 2,000 silver. So you're going to do this tomorrow. Or, if you want, this is what I do, and this is what I recommend for newbies, you have three character slots per account, and you can make infinite accounts. It's completely allowed. If you want, you can go and make a second character and then a third character, and you can make as many as you want and do these dailies as many as you want every day, and that's going to help you out. You don't have to do it, though, but we're now at 29,515 silver. If I did the rock, uh, you know, if I, if I gained boulders, I would have an additional 80,000, but I didn't do that, so I'm a little bit behind, but that's okay. We got our food and we got our items. So let me show you how bolt casters work. But first, let's find a tier 4 zone. We're going to push, push Elm. I'm going to hit reset camera. That's going to zoom me back to bridge watch here. Okay, cool. So we can see that um, to the left of this road leads to a tier 4. This is Roman numerals, tier 4 zone. Or we can go down here to a tier 4 zone. It's completely up to you. Or you can continue further away from town. That's fine. I'm going to go to either Drywater Meadow or Sand G Gust Cleft. The reason why is because these zones are further away from town, which means there are less players, which means there are more mobs for me to kill. So to leave town, I need to take this road here. And we're going to go down and to the right, and that's going to send me to the next zone. That guy just wasted fireworks, by the way. You get those during holidays. Um, pretty cool to catch on camera, though. Okay, so now... Uh, now we're going to ride out. You notice that I have a little protective bubble here, okay? And now we see mobs. You're going to dismount and you're going to kill the mobs, and that's what you're going to do. Now, you'll you'll notice that we deal so much more damage. We get more fame because we're in a tier 4 zone. The bolt casters help us deal immense damage, okay? All right. And as we travel downwards, we're just going to kill every mob we see. If you ride on the roads, you won't see as many mobs. So if, let me zoom out here. I'm going to use my mouse wheel. Okay, so we need to go down to this part of the, the map so we can get to the next zone. Here's a mob. Now let me show you how bolt casters work, okay? Bolt casters are a channeled ability on your E spell. And uh, at the very end, it's going to basically deal damage. It's going to ramp up damage. Look how fast I kill this mob. All right, just look at his health bar. He's just dead in one spell. And we just uh, got 1,600 um, <laughs> worth of fame. This guy's looking at me. That's fine. By the way, if you ever want to see what a player is wearing, left-click a player and then press the Y key, and you can see exactly... Oh, he's using Boltcaster Steve. Look at that. Look at this guy. He's using uh, Spirit Hunter, which is another video that I made. Uh, actually, the last tutorial I made recommended Spirit Hunter. Um, I like Boltcasters, and for this guide, you want to use Boltcasters, but you, you could use whatever you want. So remember, animals don't really give much fame, and we're not skinning them. So just kind of avoid the animals, and then remember, dismount, k kill the bigger mobs with your E spell, Kill the little baby mobs by pressing Q on them. Use your boots to get your cooldowns back faster. Make sure that you grab the silver. That's very important. Now, I know what you're thinking. How are we going to amass so much silver when they only drop like 500 at a time? I'm going to tell you right now um, that once we reach tier 5, they're going to drop way more. And the loot they drop is going to sell for way more. Okay? Don't worry about money. It's going to be generated. So what I'm going to do is right here and go a couple zones away and kill everything I encounter. And you'll see this Expert Reaver. Once we hit that, we can go to Tier 5 zones. And things get a little more interesting in a Tier 5 zone. Um, we're going to fame up way, way faster. You're going to see just how fast we fame up, okay? And I've only been... What is my playtime? I've been playing this character 
Oh, uh, I can't see playtime until I'm in the character screen, which is fine. I'm gonna show off the playtime later. Anyway, let me go down to the bottom right, and uh, we're gonna kill mobs along the way. I'll see you then. Alright, so I just hit level uh, 6 on Crossbow Fighter, which unlocks Well Prepared. Let me show you how that works. Click on your crossbows, and you'll go down here to this passive. Right now, my passive knocks back enemies every three regular attacks. But this one, every four spells, resets your cooldown on your first slot ability. So here's how it works. All right, and because I switched my passive, my spells are all on a 10 second cooldown. That's completely fine. So at the top left is my buffs, right? So when I cast a spell, I'm going to press Q on this Marmot, killing him. You see this little icon? Consecutive spells used. There's just one icon. Now I'm going to cast it again. Now that's two. And then I'm going to cast it one more time. That's three. Now, when I cast it, this will be immediately available to cast again. So watch this. Bang, bang. All right? And then it's back to one. If I use my boot ability, that's two. If I use my helmet ability, that's three. And then I can bang, bang again. And once we get a cape that does the same thing, we can shoot three times in a row. And that is an area of effect, extremely high damage, low mana cost, explosion. And things will just die. So we can just park next to the mob and then just blow them the heck up, okay? Uh, you don't want to be hit by the spells, by the way. So try to aim your area of effects in, in the middle of mobs. And yes, I'm taking damage, but that's fine because I can just eat food or use my armor. Um, in this case, uh, I have my armor's ability, at, not as the restore, uh, but as the um, <laughs> the immunity. But by the time I ride up to the next set of mobs, my HP is already going to naturally regenerate anyway. And it's a tier 4 zone. We don't really have to worry about it too much. Uh, again, just just every mob you see, just gun them down. Just gangster style, right? And this one dropped a rune, 19 silver. That sucks, but... Um, you will get better drops just over time. Don't worry about it. I'm going to show you. You're going to get those Tomes of Insight, but you're going to get a sellable version of those, and those are 20,000 each right now. Pretty darn good. Um, again, you just kill every mob you see along the way, and we're going to be Tier 5. We're already halfway there, 51% now, actually. And uh, I'll see you then. Now, I want to talk about dying real quick, okay? So whenever you don't technically die from a mob, you get downed. And when you get downed, you'll drop some silver. This is based on the uh, gear value of your items. It does, it does not take silver out of your inventory, okay? You do not lose silver when you get downed. It just throws random silver on the ground for being downed, okay? Uh, and what happens when you get down is you lose 5% of your weapon's durability. So you can see here, durability 95%. This is on everything that you're wearing and in your inventory. So you can see here, these boots, these tier 3 boots I found that took 5% durability loss, alright? Now also, w when you're around in the world, you'll encounter mobs that have like a glow to them, okay? So let me just gun this guy down. You see this guy, he has a glow, that means he's slightly more dangerous than your average mob, okay? Which means it takes a little bit more oomph to kill him. Now, if they have a circle underneath them, they are a mi mini boss, and if they, ha if they have a spiked circle underneath them, they are a bigger boss. You absolutely want to go out of your way to kill any kind of rare mob. See, that, that gave 4,250 fame and almost 1,000 silver, okay? And here we go. I just got a Tome of Insight. That's 21,000 silver right there. So uh, we could already, right now, we can go back to town and we can get uh, that Care Leone cape, which is what I'm actually... I'm going to kill my way back to town by that cape because that's going to tremendously speed up our kill speed. Um, but And along the way, I'm going to make sure that I hit Expert Reaver so that we can jump straight into Tier 5 zones. And again, all I'm doing is running around and um, just killing mobs. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And picking up the silver that they drop. And uh, like against beefier mobs, like this guy is pretty scrawny, right? Uh, but against beefier mobs, I just use my E spell and that just uh, gangster guns them down. Uh, mount back up. You can see I have three charges, so I can, I can shoot two of these now. Half his health is already gone. And uh, yeah... See how fast we're killing these mobs, and we're getting tons and tons of fame, tons and tons of silver. It's, it's, they have sped this up so darn much compared to the old game. Before November 2021, you would do dungeons, and you would take about 10 times as long to get the experience, or the fame, that we're getting now. Now, if you want, you don't have to sell this, you could use it and gain 10,000 fame, but, um, do you know how many mobs I can kill? I can kill, like, two mobs and get that, okay? Or I can get 21,000 silver, which is way more useful to us right now. Okay, um, so it's your choice, but um, I'm going to tell you right now um, that you should uh, definitely sell the tome. Now, real quick, if you see these little portals on this map, they look like this. Don't go into these. This enters what's called the Roads of Avalon. This means you can be permanently, or not permanently killed, you can, you can die in these zones. 
Um, they, they're counted as black zones. Everyone can attack and kill you, and they can take your stuff. And you are not, you do not have the funds to go into a black zone right now, nor do you have the reaver level, so you should not go into those at all. Stay out of them for now. Do not click onto them. Don't even go in to look around. Uh, it's not worth your time right now. Plus, the roads teleport, they can teleport you semi-randomly around the world. So if you enter a portal and you lose your way, you could end up so far from home you might not be able to get back so it's very risky for you to go into those okay same thing with these green ones um just don't go in them these are group dungeons by the way or this is a static group dungeon they're meant for groups i have videos on my channel on how to solo statics those no longer apply they have been massively buffed and they are not worth doing killing mobs out in the open world is completely worth doing currently in the game is what you should be focusing on to rank up extremely quickly. Don't worry about that stuff. You'll get to explore it later when you have a nice bankroll and you have plenty of good items and lots of silver so that if you do die, uh, you will be able to, um, you know, recover from it and not be bankrupt naked begging for money or picking up rocks off the ground, okay? So I'm going to cut back to once uh, I'm back in town and I've unlocked Expert Reaver. By the way, if you're out in the world and you see, like, a an attackable piece of thing on the ground like you see how this has like a little glow to it this is called a hidden treasure go ahead and attack this and it's going to reward you with some random loot and some silver so let's see what we got we got 1300 silver and uh there was no loot huh there used to always be loot anyway sometimes there's loot sometimes there's not but hey it was a good amount of silver for basically just keeping an eye out right uh so keep be on the lookout for those all right, so we have unlocked Tier 5 Reaver. You can see now that we're working on Master Reaver, which is Tier 6. Um, that is the red zones and, you know, da more dangerous parts of the black zone. So, we're back in town. We're going to go ahead and go to the repairman, and we're going to pay 1800 to repair. Always repair. You, you can't sell your equipment if you don't repair. You always want your gear to be in tip-top shape anyway. I know it may sound expensive. It's not. Don't worry about it. All right, so now we're going to go to the market. We're going to sell that tome we found, which... Don't worry, you'll, you'll find a lot of these. They drop pretty darn often, okay? Um, so don't feel bad about selling them. I would prefer if you don't use them. I'm going to sell it for 21000 after taxes. We're going to sell this other stuff for basically pennies. It's it's not a big deal. Just get it out of our inventory. And we have 60, what is this, 65000 We can now afford a Carleon cape. Type C-A-E-R-L-E-O-N. So C-A-E-R and then Leon. And then cape. All right, and that is going to run us 53,000 currently. And the reason we're buying this is so that we can cast two Q spells. Also, capes give you more mana regeneration and more mana. Very useful to have. I'm going to right-click that and put that on. And this tier 2 cape, we can just go ahead and sell it. So, see you later. We are... Now all we have left to upgrade is our bag. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. Uh, I, I want to tell you about bags, okay? Real quick. This is something very important. Um... There is something called a Satchel of Insight. This acts as a bag, but it also acts as a way to gain additional experience. However, this additional experience costs you silver. This is a newbie trap. Do not ever wear a satchel until you are very wealthy and you have millions and millions of silver, premium going, and you have many, many alternate ways to make silver via laborers, gathering, crafting, your farmland, all that kind of stuff. Do not ever put one of these on until you are absolutely stinking rich, super wealthy, because this will drain your money dry. And it, it yes, you do get more experience, but there is, there is no rush. It's okay. You don't need this. Do not wear this ever, okay? So instead, we're just going to go to accessories and go to bag and then go to tier four. And 3,500, that's not bad. We're going to go ahead and put that on. It's significantly more weight than our tier two. Our tier two lets us carry 20. This lets us carry 79. So that's pretty good. I'm going to sell the tier 2 bag now. Um, and that's going to run us 200. There you go. And we are all set. We can now go out into the tier 5 zones. We don't need food. We don't need potions. You don't need it. Uh, we got everything that we need. Now at this point, yes, we can go to the black zone. I'm going to show you how to get there. And I'm going to tell you right now. Open your inventory. Hover your mouse over estimated market value. Everything that we are currently wearing is worth 91,678 silver. I have 8,000 silver to my name. If we go out into the black zone and we die, we are bankrupt. We can no longer re-gear our character. So do not go into the black zone until you have significantly more silver than this. Alright? 
As a matter of fact, I don't even recommend going to the Black Zone until you have 30 days premium activated, you have your islands running, and several other revenue like sources to make money, okay? But if you want, you can do that, and here's how to do it. So every zone has kind of like a gateway of sorts. For Bridgewatch, it's this top le little left area here. You're going to walk into it, and this actually binds you. So you, you want to make sure that um, you are at the city that you want to like be at, because once you go through these portals, it's, a, it's really hard to go to any other town. And you will see this portal here. You're going to left-click it, and this is the Realm Gate. You get to choose west, north, or east. Okay, and once you go through this, you get a small shield, you can turn invisible from a shrine, and after that, you're you're on your own. Someone can kill you and take everything. But if you if you look in the black zone here, in, in the realm gates, these are tier five zones and they border tier five zones. We are tier five reavers, so we can go to these tier five zones and kill mobs and get significantly more rewards. I'm going to tell you right now, don't bother with it until you have a bankroll, because if you die, and you will die, because players are constantly hunting people, and as a newbie, you may not have the muscle memory, you may not have the game understanding enough to afford to lose gear. Again, you lose everything, everything you are wearing and everything in your inventory. You don't lose silver, but you lose all of your equipment and what you're carrying. Uh, so you want to be absolutely sure that you don't go out and do that. Now, before you head out to um, the Tier 5 zones, here's something to keep in mind. There is a faction vendor. This is the uh, the Bridgewatch faction enlistment area, right? At some point, you're going to unlock this. Go ahead and left-click it, and it's going to tell you that, well, I need basically uh, two times more as much fame that I farmed up. But once I hit this, this threshold of 157,000, I will be able to enlist in a faction. You can enlist and unlist at any time. But by enlisting in a faction, you can increase your experience gain by 15%, and you will gain faction points, which will allow you to buy items, which will make you a lot of silver very quickly. I can farm 3,000 faction points in a tier 5 zone extremely quickly, especially with premium active, and these things sell, uh, which it's not going to show me on this screen, but they sell for about 30,000 silver each. Okay, at least chests give you tomes of insight that allow you to level up fast, and they can give you some good rewards. Those are for 9,000. So when when you have this unlocked, go ahead and enlist. As long as you are in a tier 5 or below zone, when you are faction 5, you do not lose gear. You will be able to uh, be attacked by other players, but you won't be downed. So now, since we need to go fame up, we're going to go to some tier 5 zones, but we're not going to go to just the one outside town. That would be silly. There are two hostile players in this zone. You see these red circles? This is, is called a blob. This means there are a large amount of players gathered in these circles. This orange circle means they are faction flagged for bridge watch. Um, so I, that's not really relevant right now, but it's something good to know for later. So we're going to ride into a deeper, kind of in the middle of the map, yellow tier 5 zone. So if you look at our map, we're going to reset the camera. I'm going to close and open it so it's faster. Uh, we're going to go to one of these deeper tier 5 zones that are further away from any town, like right in here. These are some good ones. Croker Hill, Hill, Felkness Hill, Carnes Hill. You can also go the other direction towards here, uh, but there are more people in Limhurst than there are Martlock. So I'm going to go this direction, and I'm just going to find mobs to kill. And we're going to do that until we, um, you know, get a good bankroll. And this guy, look at this guy, he's like dying. Let's look, let's look at his gear. Flat tier 4, excellent. Uh, he's wearing plate armor. Like, this guy needs this guide, okay? He's wearing a plate helmet. This guy is not built for um, for, for this section, right? Um, this other guy, though, managed to do it with uh, Tier 5. Uh, he's wearing leather armor and so on and so forth, right? You can, you can inspect people and see what they're wearing in case you're curious what they're using or what abilities they're using. Uh, so, you know, just good to know. Anyway, let's ride further out because... The less people there are in a zone, the more mobs are available to kill. And the way the mobs in, in the open world work is, the longer they remain untouched, the more they level up. Which gives them that yellow glow, and eventually a circle underneath them. Eventually a spiky circle underneath them, making them worth tons. So you're just going to ride around, and because we are not PvP flagged, or faction flagged, uh, we shouldn't have any cooldowns when we dismount, okay? Except because we just entered the zone. Now let me talk about PvP flag. I'm going to kill this guy real quick. See how much we get. Basic mob, 800. I hit the silver amounts, 169. So let's talk about PvP flagging. If you see a player in a yellow zone with a red name, 
a red nameplate. That means they are hostile. They can attack you, you can attack them. Okay, here's how you become hostile. You see the circle at the top uh, right of your nameplate? If you left click that, you will channel a bar. This means that you are turning hostile. You cannot turn back into normal mode for 15 minutes. There is no benefit to do this in a yellow zone at all. I'm going to cancel it because I don't want to fa flag up. But everyone will be able to attack you if you flag up, okay? And what happens is if you're PvP flagged, this number f turns from 0 to 1. And um, what happens is you will just have a mob of blue players follow you around and then down you, okay? Um, hostile players are also hostile to other hostile players. So you see our cape there? We were able to cast two Q spells immediately and kill both of these mobs instantaneously. And we can do that every 37 seconds. And we have three of our cooldowns, so we can do it again to this guy. And then we could use some of our abilities, right? Dodge his attacks. And there we go. And that was 2,772 fame. And again, we could just rinse and repeat this, okay? <laughs> see how fast these mobs are dying? These are tier 5 mobs, and we're just blowing them up immediately. And then the bigger guys, you just cast your E spell on them. And if they're glowing, or they have the spiky circle underneath them, you cast your Armor Shred W spell on them, and then you cast E on them, and they will just melt. They will instantaneously melt. This is the fastest weapon combination items to clear these mobs in the entire game, and... Let me tell you, on my main character who has a very high spec in crossbow, so what spec is, is every item has item power, and as you level it up, this number increases. So on my main character, I can use these same exact bolt casters, and they are equivalent to a tier 8 bolt caster in power. So my character can use those 4.1 bolt casters, and it's like they're wearing these. These super powerful elders bolt casters, okay? And if I'm wearing the Elder's Bolt Casters, it's like I'm wearing even stronger Bolt Casters, okay? So the stronger you get, the less money you have to spend on gear. So we're just going to dismount, kill more mobs. This one's a little bit juicier. I'm going to dodge that attack, shoot her again with two more bolts. See how fast she dies? 2,772 fame. If you want to do solo random dungeons, you can. However, um, it's not nearly as much fame as doing this. Okay, you kill these mobs so incredibly fast, they give good silver and they give good loot occasionally. It's fine. Uh, you're not going to get better loot in dungeons. Even if you are extremely high leveled, this is still the better way for fame and silver. Because this silver is immediately spendable. Just make sure that you're dodging the mobs and uh, using your cooldowns. Like, I can use my armor cooldown, so when I take damage, I'm now immune and deal tons and tons of damage. I can use my boot ability to run faster and get my cooldowns back faster. I can use the shield to get mana back and take less damage from the mobs. So, just you just ride around and kill stuff. Why is there purple glows here, you may ask? These are uh, dead mobs that give hides, and they are giving enchanted hides. So that's why this guy is just kind of hanging out. He's waiting for them to respawn so we can get more enchanted hides. That's a gathering thing. That's not what this video is about. So here's a big mama throwing axes. We're just going to machine gun her down, and she's dead in one cast. 2,772 fame. All right. If I kill a boss mob in a dungeon, they're not going to give me nearly as much. And look, look how fast we're killing these things. Insanely fast, okay? Once you st once you are able to faction flag, you are going to make even more. Make sure that you're picking up the silver that they drop as well. Uh, right now we're at 14,000 silver. That's fine. We were at 8,000 watt just a little bit ago, weren't we? Here's a glowing mob. Let's take them out. We're going to do armor shred into E. And we might have to just tank this ability. That's fine. It's a shootout. Look how much damage we did. Look how much damage they did to us. We're halfway dead. That's fine. 6,000 fame. Done. Easy. And let's pick up that silver. That's 1,000 silver. She didn't drop any items. And by the way, this is the reputation system. So the reputation system, you can left click your portrait and click stats. You can see your reputation. I'm reputable. If you hurt other players or down them in the yellow zone or red zone or black zone. Not black zone, but just red zone. You will lose reputation. I think it actually works for Black Sun too. But uh, as you lose reputation, uh, you won't be allowed in towns anymore. But you will receive little bonuses. I can't show them here. Or maybe I can. Like if you are nefarious or dreaded. No, it won't show me. But glorious, you receive 9% defense against players. And crowd control resistance increased by 10%. So as you grind mobs, you'll eventually reach glorious. And you can actually kill other players and still be allowed in towns for a while. That's why it's cool to build it up. But anyway, that's the reputation system, just in case you're wondering. And um, one thing I haven't been doing, by the way, is crossbow fighter. I forgot to be using my learning points. 
the closer you are to leveling up to the next tier, uh, the less learning points it costs. So in this case, I'm at 99%. I'm not going to use a learning point for that. I'm just going to go kill one mob and advance to the next tier, which is level 10, which unlocks tier 5. So I can technically wear five tier 5.3 bolt casters. We don't need to spend money on that right now. We need to we need to save a lot of money so that we can go to red zones or black zones and advance way, way faster, okay? If I kill one mob in a tier 5 or a tier 6 black zone, it's going to give me like 150,000 fame. Or if I kill one in a yellow zone, it's going to give me like, like, like the highest tier might be like 50 to 60,000 fame. So you can see that it's a huge difference. And there's less people in the black zones because they're afraid of losing loot, which means there's more mobs to run around and kill. Also, mobs always respawn in the same spots, so if you want to pick a map and learn the spawns, that will dramatically increase your fame gains. You can see there's a lot of other players running around. This one's faction flagged, by the way. So he's got a little bonus to experience and fame. Uh, but if he moved three tiles away, then he would receive more. So there's a lot of there's a cluster of mobs there, and I want to kill them. But this this player might actually also want the same thing. Yeah, he, he wants the same thing. If you deal more damage than them, you can actually steal the kills. I was not able to do it because this guy is using a tier 6 uh, spear. So he, he got those mobs, but that's okay because we can kill this mob really fast. Look how much damage we're doing. One ability, down it goes. And again, just continue to rinse and repeat this. I know, I know this step might be a bit boring. This is the mob grinding step. I know it sucks, but you gotta do it. Um, again, remember, we've only been playing this character maybe an hour. I think. I think we have like one to two hours on this character tops, right? Uh, and we just made it. This is your first day on the character, man. You got three whole days of premium ahead of you. And we're going to make lots of silver. We're going to upgrade our gear if we want. Or we can bank the silver and go into the black zones. And let me tell you, once you reach like tier 6, tier 7 in the black zones, you can kill like two mobs and get all your money back, okay? It's not a big deal. This guy was coming to kill the mobs, it looks like, but I went ahead and took him out instead. All right, so crossbow fighters, 12%. Uh, we're going to continue to kill mobs. When that hits 20%, we're going to use our learning points to level that up so that we can use better crossbows. I'm going to continue deeper into the yellow zones here uh, to get further away from civilization so that there are more mobs available for me to kill. Now, if you look on the map, you'll see a big treasure box here. If you pay a fee, you can unlock that as storage so that you, you don't have to run all the way back to town. That's a waste of money currently for our character, so don't don't fall for that trap. That's for later on when you want to store more crap outside. So we can go ahead and use our learning points there, and now it's level 11. And Oh, look, we got a tome. That's 21,000 silver. So we have 17 plus 21, and that's, what, 38,000 silver worth of items right now. So we're one-third away from being able to replace our entire gear set. So at that point, we could safely go to the black zone and afford one, you know, re-gear if we want. Or we can continue to build up our current set of items so we, we can kill mobs faster. But the sooner that you get to the black zone and start killing those mobs, you will rank up so, so much faster. So let's continue to kill mobs. And I want to unlock tier 6 Reaver, okay? I'm a 17% of the way there. It's going to take a little bit longer to unlock that if unless I find some really juicy boss monsters on the map, right? Which I will eventually find. I'm, I'm actually playing a, during a little bit more busy time of day. It's 12 p.m. Uh, UTC, so there's more people on. But if you play overnight, there will be lots more mobs for you to kill. And remember, we have the gear to be able to blow them up very, very quickly. And also, if you want to risk the Black Zone without the Care Leon Cape, that'll save you like 40, 54,000 worth of value. All right. So it's up to you how much you want to risk, or how long you want to spend, how efficient you want to be at killing mobs. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here until I rank up to tier 6 Reaver. And we're going to look at my character stats page to see how long I've been playing to achieve that. By the way, this is what a group dungeon looks like. It's a blue entrance. This is meant for players of like 5 or more. Um, there's no point to go into those. Yes, you can solo mobs when you have lots of powerful gear, but it is still not nearly as much fame gain as just running around killing mobs in the world. By the way, these little stone golems, they count as, uh, elemental harvestable monsters, okay? Um, so you can actually kill these and then mine them for resources, um, I believe at tier 4 and 5. Uh, the tier 3 ones, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you can at the tier 3 ones, I believe. I, I forget, it's been a while, but, uh, that's a gathering thing, don't worry about that. You're looking for humanoids to kill, not rock elementals, because they don't give the fame um, that the actual monsters of the zone do. 
Now, if you see a portal like this, this is a corrupted dungeon, okay? What this is, is it teleports you into an instance kind of arena thing with some demons to kill and some boss monsters and treasure chests. And um, people can invade your dungeon or you can invade someone else's and have a PvP match. Um, there are three difficulty levels, and at the first difficulty level, you do not lose your gear, but the second and third difficulty levels are permanent, and if you die in them, you lose everything you're carrying and everything you're wearing. So, uh, that's what those are. Now, sometimes you will get very valuable gear, like these boots are worth 77,000. So, you just got lucky. It happens sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. You just gotta keep killing mobs, and you'll eventually make a lot of money. Again, just shoot every single living humanoid that you see, and there you go. Easy fame, easy money, easy life. And uh, there is not a better time to start Albion than now, because um, in the old Albion before November 2021, it was so much slower than this. Uh, like, newbies have it easy. They, they can max out their fame extremely quickly. See, that time I only got a tier 3 helmet, only worth, what, 480, so that's poop. For those who want to know, how is, how is loot made? It's not generated by mobs, okay? Uh, loot is uh, dependent on what's called the black market. The black market is in Care Leon, and every item that you receive from mobs is uh, someone sold it to the black market. And the way the black market works is it has every item in the game on demand that you can sell to the black market. And the longer it takes for someone to sell an item to the black market, the more value it receives when you do sell it. So, like, this, these boots... Someone crafted these at some point in the game, and then they decided to sell it. This was crafted by First Time Karma, right? But whoever became the owner of these boots um, decided that, hey, the black market has a good deal. I'm going to sell it to them. And then the black market puts it into the pool of items that you can receive by killing mobs, doing dungeons, opening chests, and so on and so forth, right? And that is how I come to receive these boots. Once you earn enough fame and you move to a different zone, you'll be greeted with this screen that says Faction Warfare has been unlocked, okay? So, you want to really do faction flagging if you are on the main continent. If you're in the black zone, you can't faction flag, that's not how the game works. But anytime you are not in the black zone, you should always be faction flagged because it's free money, it's more experience, or more fame rather, and more silver, so there's no reason not to do it. By the way, this is what a hostile player looks like, their name is... Their name is Red, they have the little sword icon, and uh, we can see that we wouldn't be able to take on this feller at all. He's got almost a thousand HP on us, he's got uh, higher tier weapons. You see these little, um, these little metal icons next to his equipment? That means he has a very high level spec on his gear. Like this, uh, his item power is way higher than 995, it's probably like 1004 or 1500. So something really high like that, okay? So if you see a player like that, whenever you dismount around them, you will have 5 second cooldown on your abilities. Um, also, you should be aware of nameplates like that. If you're farming mobs, they might dismount and attack you. So you, you don't want that to happen. Um, <laughs> so be on the lookout. Make sure your mount is nearby. I'm going to eat this spell. Ouch. It's fine. And I'm stunned in it. So it's taking lots of damage, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> just thought I'd share with you. Be aware of nameplates. You can see in the bottom right, there is one hostile player in the zone. It was that guy. Um, but anyone that walks into a PvP circle will also be counted as hostile. So if you see a chest icon like this, it, there is a circle around this chest when it unlocks that will make everyone uh, PvP flagged. So that number might jump up. Don't, don't think it's like a gang squad. It's just people fighting over the chests. If you're in a secluded zone, you can go for the chest, but generally it's... There's usually like a duo or a trio that hunt those chests down and they use battle mounts and very high tier equipment. As a newbie, you probably won't be able to take them on, but sometimes you can kind of sneak in and grab it if they're busy fighting someone else. It's, it really depends. You can go for it if you want. The only loss you'll have is a small repair bill. So go for it if you feel like it. By the way, this is what faction flagging looks like. I'm not faction flagged, but these guys are fighting on a point. They're going to capture the point. They're going to get some faction points and... Uh, it's, it's a fun time. There's no risk of losing gear because they're in a, uh, in a yellow zone. And right now you can see that there is a small blob of people fighting over this chest in this little PvP circle. There's nine people still flagged. This guy is flagged. He's got a ranged weapon. I don't want him to dismount me. They took the chest. Um, that's just how, this is how it works. All right. In order to reach Tier 6 Reaver and afford a whole second gear set, it took me 2 hours 56 minutes. That is from Character Creation now and that is not speed run pace that is just casual hey i'm making a youtube video pace 
Um, all right, so right now we are at 60, ooh, 69, 1,828 silver, and we have 109,000 in loot that we can sell. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit that repair guy up. Always hit the repair guy, only 552 because I wasn't downed, uh, didn't, didn't, you know, trip and fall. We're going to go sell our loot, and we're going to see how much silver we have. Remember, the silver that you have can never be lost. When you die, you do not lose your silver. When you get down, you do not lose your silver. So let's just go ahead and quick sell everything here real quick. Like, we're going to lose 3,000 on this bow for video purposes. I'm just going to quick sell it. Same with the bag. Uh, these runes. Runes are used to upgrade gear. Okay, so this was a big one, right? This was 72,000. There's only one in the market. Uh, people are offering 19,000 for it. I'm going to take a huge loss here for the sake of the video. Um, but I don't recommend that you take that much of a loss. Um, because these will sell. They almost always sell. Play more, found that. So we're at 117,000 silver. So what this means is that I can replace my equipment if I die. Now, I have two choices here. I could upgrade my gear more if I want and deal more damage and clear mobs faster and more safely in the yellow zones. Or I can start going to red zones and the black zone if I wanted. So there's two paths from here. If you, if you want to make more money, you're going to want to faction flag and do your faction dailies. So we're going to go to the faction vi uh, vendor and enlist, and then we're going to flag, okay? So what this does is puts this little orange icon next to my name because I'm in Bridgewatch. Bridgewatch is orange. And uh, now I can see faction chat uh, as well, uh, as well as general chat. Anyway, uh, now... Every action I do will earn faction points, okay? And I could use those faction points to buy and sell, or yeah, buy these items and then sell them on the market. So every day you have dailies, and um, once I reach 5,000 faction points, that's going to complete the dailies for my rank ups and all that kind of fun stuff. The more you participate, the more points you get, and then at the end of the week you can get additional bonus of points. So it's just, it's just really good. It's just good easy money. And all you gotta do is run around, kill mobs, you can gather, you can also down other players. Now, because we're faction flagged, there's a few things that are gonna go on, right? If we move three... Oh, there's a fight going on, okay? Um, if we move three tiles away, we will receive 15% additional loot, fame, and silver. So we always want to be at least three tiles away. Each tile, like this is one tile from town, this would be two tiles, and then down here would be three tiles, right? And because if we are in a yellow zone, we will not lose our gear. Now, people of other factions will be having red nameplates. They will not show as a hostile player on the bottom uh, player count, uh, but you can be on the lookout. Right now, we can see an orange blob over here. So if I want to participate with my faction, I can just join this orange blob and follow them around and attack what they attack, and I'll get tons of points. It's free money. It's also fun. Um... Now, there was a green blob earlier, but right now it's showing red. This is a Limhurst blob because they're attacking. Yeah, you can see that the blobs have split off a bit. And you can see all these other people too with these icons. You know, you can just follow the herd and uh, you'll get rewards. You'll make easy money. Uh, you won't so much get stronger doing this if you're fighting other players. But um, let's, let, me sh let me kill this mob here and show you exactly what I'm talking about. When we kill him, there's going to be a new icon that pops up. It is this little plus four, little orange circle. That means four faction points. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but as you continue to uh, do faction things, you're going to earn more points, and, the, you know, the stronger mobs you fight, the more points you get. Like, for, for this big boy, we got 15. Now, every 15 to 30 minutes, you will get a bonus um, that will just appear in your chat window in the bottom left here. And that could range from anywhere from, like... 500 to like several thousand okay and remember every 3,000 we earn is like 30,000 additional silver and this is something that we're already doing anyway so uh, interesting thing this is a bridge watch capture point these mobs are friendly to us but uh, to enemy players not flagged players but enemy players they will attack they, they, they'll attack flagged players too by the way that's my bad they changed that uh, so we can make a decision now that decision is, do we want more earnings? And to do that, we would have to go to a red zone. Oh, you see this guy? He's got a green icon and a red name. That is a flag enemy player. Uh, he would absolutely kill us if we fought him in battle. Um, but if we have a bunch of our buddies with us, it's worth a shot. Anyway, so if I decide to go this direction, I can go to a tier 6 red zone. This means I am risking 91,000 in loot. 
for the sake of the video, we're going to attempt it, okay? Uh, I don't recommend you do this until you have a bigger bankroll. There is zero hostile players, but that doesn't mean um, that there might not be factioned players, okay? Uh, because being faction flag does add more danger. So what we're going to do is be hyper aware. This guy is acting weird. He could be a scout. You need to be suspicious of everyone. This guy could be a scout. He's just chilling. He's just chilling here. He's got like no gear. This is totally a scout. This is someone on their phone or in Discord telling someone up ahead on the road that I am coming. Okay. Um, we're going to risk it. For the biscuit, right? Okay, so here we go. My eyeballs are up here in the top right of the corner of the screen. I am looking for red nameplates. If I see any red, I am turning the heck around and running. Okay, our build does not really merit... Oh, there's red names. Run, 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 run. And we're gone. See, they're guarding that bridge. They are right there. If we, if we continued in that direction, we would lose our stuff and be dead. And this is something that you learn over time with experience. And this guy, he's telling, he's telling. He is literally ratting me out. If I flagged up, if I... Oops, he's coming for me, right? This guy's coming. Look at look at him. Uh, <laughs> but now I'm back in the yellow zone. It's okay. I'm in the yellow zone. I can't lose my stuff. I'm good. If I want to go to a red zone, I will have to take the long way around, okay? In this case, it, it's not happening. I'm playing during a busier part of the day. I can't... Like, okay, uh, assuming I was a new player, I wouldn't be able to afford to lose it. I only have 118,000. I don't have my first 30-day premium yet. I don't have any islands set up. I don't have farmland set up. I don't have laborers set up. And if you want to learn more about all of that stuff I'm talking about, because you're probably like, Swole Benji, what the heck is a, is a laborer? What the heck is, is farmland? I don't know how to do any of this. I have several videos on my channel. I have 260 guide videos for this game. I have this entire game covered. Go watch those videos. I, I made them just for you. That's what they're there for. <laughs> okay, so go check them out. For now, I'm going to um, continue. No, I'm going to show you the black zone. Okay, from here on out, it, it's up to you how you want to farm. But um, the black zone is definitely the biggest fame rewards for money. Tier 6 and tier 7 red zones while faction flagged will earn you more money. Okay. Uh, but also, the Black Zone is, is very good for earning mo money if you find boss monsters. But it's very dangerous, and I'm playing during I'm playing during a busy part of the day, so it's very risky. But let's go ahead. I'm going to show you the Black Zone and show you how to survive. You have to be absolutely paranoid, especially when you don't have a big bankroll, okay? So, when we go to the Black Zone, it's going to remove our faction flag, because you can't be faction flagged in the Black Zone. That's just how the game works, okay? So, we're going to go up here, and we're going to go to the Black Zone now. And this tutorial is slowly coming to an end. I know it was a long one, but this game, it does have a, has a lot of depth to it. I'm also going to talk about focus. We have a thousand focus. I'll show you that afterwards. I'm going to go to the Sandrift Portal West. Let's go. Okay, the very first thing, when we enter this zone, we're, we're kind of protected. We have this protective bubble. People can't hurt us. Okay, but they might try. This guy, look at all these dudes. They're all going to try to kill me, right? But I have this bubble. If you look up here, I have this bubble for 20 more seconds. But I can I can left-click this shrine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dismount. I'm going to left-click the shrine. I am now invisible and immune. And now my horse is invisible. They can't see me. They can't hurt me. I am... No! Oh, dang. I just made a big mistake. I just went back into town. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and tell you this now. Okay, you see these icons? This is a, you cannot gain a spawn buff again right now for 30 seconds. That means if I go back through this portal, I will not have that protected bubble and those guys will kill me. Secondly, I have this one and this is really bad. Okay, I cannot get protection from the portal shrine. That little well that I drank from that made me invisible and immune, I can't get that for 10 more minutes. So I gotta wait for this one to go away. Okay. And that's going to give me a, a 20 second bubble. But I can't turn invisible. And a lot of players, what they'll do is they'll dismount. They'll try to drink the shrine, which will remove their protective bubble. And then they will be murdered. And they will lose all of their stuff. So I'm going to go back. And we're going to get that bubble. That little 30 second bubble of protection. There we go. These guys now know that I can't drink from that shrine. But I can I can haul my butt over, over here. Once I leave this area, I am... Not so safe. So I am, I'm, my eyeballs are in the top left corner. I am looking for nameplates. I do not want to run into a nameplate. They will kill me, take all my stuff. It's very risky. I have no protective bubble. I am completely vulnerable. There's no one here. Good, good. Okay, so now we're in the new zone. Do we get a bubble? 
I gotta protect a bubble again. Okay, cool. This is a tier six black zone, I believe. Reset camera. Uh, tier five. Okay, so uh, we can we can go to Stone Lake Fields. Okay, oh, oh, there's a player. He he spotted me. I am spotted. All of these players. I'm inspecting. There's so many people. Look at this, and they're all in the same guild. If I advance, they will spread out. They're they're going to communicate with each other, and they're going to kill me. But I have this bubble for thirty. No, I am. I no longer have a bubble. If I zone through here, I cannot get a bubble for 20 more seconds, which means I am vulnerable. This guy sees it. He might dismount on me. Maybe not. Again, this is this is all risk. If I want, I can roam around here and kill mobs. I don't really have a way to escape, though. So I'm going to I'm going to switch to run on the boots. I'm going to switch to knock back on the helmet in case someone engages me. And um, I'll, I'll keep that ability. Uh, we'll do knockback shot as well. Th th this is a defensive option for me, okay? But if if I want, I could try to kill this guy. It's it's risky because these guys could zone right through here. They see me fighting this mob. They see that I'm vulnerable, like this guy right now. He could just murder me. He's got. If he dismounts, it's five seconds before he can use his abilities. Oh, there's too many people. <laughs> Again, this is high stress situation. All of these guys vastly outgear me. Um, I, I can't get a portal shrine buff for seven more minutes, so it's really hard to go back to town from here, okay? And look, someone just died. You see in, in the chat here? Lip, this guy just died. This guy just died. You can see on the map where they died. And th there's apparently a fight here or something? Something's go there, There's something going on. There's there's like a little war going on over here, so we're just gonna walk away from that. And, uh, ooh, there's a glowing mob. This would be really cool to kill. It's really dangerous, okay? So here we go. We're gonna press E on this mob, and it's gonna hurt us. I just lost bubble buff. Okay, but hey, you know, we're strong. Look at that. Look how much more we got. Okay, we just got 11,000. If we killed this in the, in the tier 5 yellow zone, it would be like 2,000. We got 2,600 silver. So if you can find these boss mobs and kill them, you can make your money back very quickly. So if you die, it's no loss. But it's risky, okay? Especially right now, because you're still a new player, you don't have a lot of spec, you don't have a lot of power behind you, and you don't have a lot of experience. What I'm doing is extremely risky. Any direction that I'm moving right now, my eyeballs are locked onto that corner of the screen. So if I go up, my eyeballs are up here. I'm looking for nameplates. I, if I see a nameplate, I turn around, okay? Um, <laughs> again, very risky stuff. But right now, there's no people around. I can actually kill some of these mobs. Maybe. You want to stay very close to your mount, and mount the heck up if you see any nameplates anywhere. Alright, so let's go ahead and kill these guys. Two-shotted, easy, simple. I use knockback shot. I can actually switch that off if I want. Oh, nameplate, nameplate. Mount up, mount up. They're coming, they're coming. Oh, he's dismounting. He's running. They're all coming for me. It's over. I'm dead. Right? But because I... Oh, I'm run, I, I just got hit by a mob. I'm slowed. I'm running to that exit. I am running to the exit. So are they. This guy. These guys are running ahead of me, so they can dismount. And, uh, but I'm going this way. See that guy? He just, oh, see that guy dismounted too. I am being hunted right now. I'm being hunted by player killers and they're going to kill me and take my stuff. And I have not made my money back yet. That guy is dismounted too. If you see a nameplate and there is not a yellow bar underneath their mana bar, that means they are dismounted. That means very dangerous. Now, here's the thing too. Don't attack them and put yourself in combat because if you do, you cannot zone out. Now, if I run through this white line, I will get a protective bubble and they can't hurt me, okay? So I'm, I'm not going to touch it because I, I need that bubble, but I can't drink the shrine from the other thing to go back to town. So again, this is all high risk right now. And remember, some of these guys can go, he's, he's dismounted and he's coming, right? He could go invisible and he could just appear next to me if he has an invisibility ability. <laughs> invisibility ability, it's hard to say. It's like a tongue twister, okay? Oh, there he is. See, he's coming. So I'm, I'm keeping my distance, okay? I'm just gonna hit that bubble. Okay, so he's he's checking me out. What's he got? Yeah, he's got a gank gank build. He's got a hold you down gank you build. He just zoned out. He, I, I guess he didn't find me interesting enough to kill, or maybe he thinks I'm bait. You know, he he might be sus of me. I might be afraid. He might be afraid of me. Okay, so that's the risk you gotta take. We know that there's bad guys up this direction. They just killed somebody on the map. <laughs> Again, this, it's very. If you can go deep into the black zone. You can get away from people, or if you play during off hours. I'm not playing during off hours. If I dismount and start fighting, they're going to try to kill me. <laughs> That's just simple as, okay? 
Um, but if you're in the black zone, the rewards are so much better. Oh, there's a player nearby. Just, uh, just bounce up. You, you see how I have that red exclamation point and my abilities were not available to cast immediately? That's because there was a player nearby. Okay, now we can attack. Let's go. Killed, we killed both of those. 300 silver, because these are just little baby bobs. <laughs> okay. Heart's beaten, blood's pumping, and this isn't even my real character. This is just for YouTube, okay? Let's kill one of these dudes. And now, I want to tell you now about hacks. There are a lot of unscrupulous players that use hack programs. These players can see way further than you. They can zoom out their map. They can zoom out their game and see like a satellite view of everything around them. They also have lines connecting to other players or resources. Um, that's called ESP. Um, I forget what it stands for right now, um, but it's not good. Um, there's also speed hackers that can run faster than the game intends, and they can catch up to you no matter what and kill you and take all your stuff. This is all risks that you have to do when you're in the black zone. All right. Now, if you get far enough in the black zone and you kill a boss monster, if I find a guy with spikes under him and I kill him, the amount of silver he's going to give me will more than make up everything that I'm currently wearing, so it doesn't matter at that point if I die and lose it all or not. Now, if I kill 100 mobs without dying out here, then I'll, I'll, I've made the silver back. Um, now, the mobs are a little tougher. They deal a little bit more damage. Um, you'll notice, too, that I'm getting I'm getting something called Might for being out in the black zone. Um, I would love to sh open the menu and show you Conqueror's Challenge. Um, this stuff, you can get battle mount rewards. It's really, really hard to, to level this stuff up by yourself. Um, but you can do it if you're out here in the black zone. So, um... It's a little more advanced. I don't really want to cover it in this video. Also, if a mob hits you, you can't mount up, uh, but you can restart. There's an item drop here. Tier 3 bag. Okay, if I die, I lose that. It's not wise to let mobs hit you like that, okay? Because if a player sees you getting attacked by mobs, they know you can't mount up as quickly and they might kill you. Okay. So where where are we now? We're working on our Grandmaster Reaver. That is tier uh, 7. So we don't want to go to a tier 7 zone. Remember, I'm looking for nameplates all around. My eyeballs are just scanning the outsides of my screen. I don't want anyone to be within the vicinity of me at all. Because they could kill me and take my stuff. And that's not good. But I can afford to re-gear. Okay, these mobs are a little beefier. They're actually a lot beefier. Um, I'm going to have to run from this. Yeah, I'm running from that. That guy has way too much health. And so does she. I don't... Oh, that's a dungeon entrance! That's why they're so dangerous! Yeah, I can't kill those. That's intended for group players. You see here, um, this whole area? Big group dungeon-y area. I shouldn't have attacked them. But I did make it out. That's okay. Let's, uh, we can continue deeper in the zone, and this puts you further away from town. Or I can teach you how to get back to town. Let's teach you how to get back to town, okay? Uh, it's important skill to know. Um, <laughs> had enough fun out in the black zone. <laughs> If you when you when you have more money, it's not a big deal. If you get killed, it's like oh whatever. I, I lost like ten minutes of work. Whoop de do. On my main character, if I died with ninety thousand, I can make three million silver in like twenty minutes. Okay, three million silver versus ninety thousand. I have the bubble. I'm gonna zone out, and I'm going to be able to drink from that shrine because my cooldown ran out. Okay. I have the bubble. They can't hurt me. They can't hurt me. I can drink from this shrine. Yoink, I'm invisible. I'm immune. They can't see me. They can't hurt me. I'm fine. Okay, we have invisibility and in, an invulnerability for two minutes. And we're silenced and we can't attack for those two minutes, okay? So the, the mobs can't aggro me. I can't aggro them. If I gather something or try to loot something off the ground, I lose invulnerability and invisibility. So if you see a loot bag on the ground and you're like this, don't click it. Don't click dead bodies. They're traps. They're booby traps. People have put them there on purpose. So, because I'm invisible and invulnerable, I can safely go back into town now. And, um, say this was better loot, I could go sell this and I would be at a, uh, profit. But, uh, you can see that, uh, <laughs> like, people are just wandering around. This guy's in cheap gear, he's just out for a fight, okay? This guy's in a little more expensive gear, he's looking probably for some group stuff. This guy's returning to town after some farming, so. That's the black zone. Um... Now, let me tell you about the red zone. I didn't get to show you the red zone because it's currently being blocked at the bridge. But the red zone, there's like, not everyone's hostile. Yeah, if you see a red name, they're hostile, of course. But most people aren't. Um, <laughs> this is how it is. 
All right, so uh, from here, uh, you can choose how you want to proceed. You can get a, a gathering tool, start gathering and compete against bots, which I don't recommend. You can continue to farm in the tier five zone until you have more money built up. Always faction flag, by the way. Like if this were me, what I would do is I would faction flag right now. I'm faction flagged and I would go farm tier five zones. And um, if you want, you can upgrade your gear and continue to upgrade your gear and just farm tier five zones and it's fine. It's not the fastest fame in the game anymore. Uh, but it is, it's very good fame. It's better than what it used to be, okay? And uh, it's completely safe. It's what I would do on my main character. Uh, you know what? That actually sounds fun. Let me show you a very powerful high-level character because, you know, just to, to, to compare power differences, okay? I'm going to cut the video and I'll, uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to show you on my main character, okay? Uh, give me just a sec. Actually, before we do that, let me talk about focus. You're going to end up with 30,000 focus from your three days of premium. You get 10,000 a day. If you want, I don't know if this still works. You have to do the math yourself, but you uh, you craft some furniture. All you have to do to craft a bed, you need 10, uh, what is this, pine planks and 20 fine cloth. So let's do some math. That'd be, uh, what is that, uh, 1,420 plus, um, it's about 4,000. I don't know, about, uh, and then yeah, another... 2000 to craft the bed right and you would use your focus and you would get some of you get 43.5 percent of these materials back all right and then you would sell the bed for a profit okay i don't know if it's a profit right now i'd have to check the markets you have to do the math but you don't need any crafting skills to craft furniture you can craft any tier of furniture that you can afford the materials for and you could use the focus to get uh, part of the cost of materials back which is how you profit from this and furniture is bought and sold all the time so that's what you would spend your focus on for your first three days. So you can make some easy money or you can save it up if you want to be a crafter. It's up to you. And before I switch, I want to show you right now this character that we've been playing for, what, three hours now? Power level 886 with a 4.1 bolt caster. Remember that number, 886. All right, lads, here we go. Two months, 14 days, 17 hours playtime on just this one character. I've got 20 plus characters that I play. And, uh, yeah, they all have several <laughs> weeks to months of playtime. So I am on my main character now, and I don't think I have a 4.1 bolt caster. Not in there. No, maybe in here. 4.1 bolt casters. I, I guess I don't own one. Okay, well, the closest thing would be this 4.2 light crossbow. Okay, and let's just put that on. Power level of 1,240, right? So it's, uh, it's like, um... 50% additional power, uh, pretty much. But you know what? Let's show you the power of a maxed geared character. Kind of doing the same thing, right? Um, I'm going to cut out to when we're on the field with all my gear. All right, here we are on our <laughs> near max level character. You can look at my destiny board here. Um, down at the crossbows. Where is it at? Where are you, crossbows? You are right here. Maxed out, of course. Everything here, level 100. The game recently, you know, with a patch, made the max level 120. So we're level 100 bolt casters with our tier 8.3 good quality, of course. We're at an item power of 1,854. And I'm using slightly different armor and boots, and that's fine. And a Thetford cape. So what the Thetford cape does is a chain lightning attack when I use an auto attack. So that just pretty much deals all the damage. So just my Q spell, 736 there. If I press E on a, a mob, it just gets murdered. Um, <laughs> now, I don't have premium on this character. And I have an 8.3 satchel, which gives me a 92% additional fame at the cost of 1.13 silver per fame. So I will burn through this 27.4 million very quickly. Now, this mount is a mount that costs 15 million. Um, this is a Basilisk. The cool thing about the Basilisk, it runs at 115% speed, got a lot of health. Even if I get attacked by a mob, it does not slow down. So that's its power. It's just a really cool vanity mount. It, it's it's like driving a Ferrari around, basically. Um, you And a Mammoth, if you've seen those big things, those are basically like driving an 18-wheeler truck. They're worth 130 plus million. I've got one of those, too. I've been playing this game way too long, guys. Anyway, that is it for the fastest possible start. It, it basically summed up um, kill mobs in the open world. That's it. That is the new edition of 2022. I have four other versions of this guide. Uh, one that covers being a gatherer, one that covers doing corrupted dungeons, one that covers doing solo random dungeons, which are these little green things right here. And um, 
this is the 2022 edition, which covers killing mobs in the open world, which is currently the fastest way in the game to fame up and get money. Okay, so I'm Soul Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. Check out the Albion Guide playlist I've got on my channel. Just click my channel name and click the Albion videos section. There's over 260 of them. There's so much good stuff in there. I've covered every single thing in this game from what is the best farm crop to, to use to what is the fastest way to get premium um, and the most reliable ways to gain fame and what weapons you should use in combination, all that kind of stuff. Any question you might have about this game, I have covered it here on this channel. So I appreciate you watching uh, let me know in the comments if you made it this far and you watched the whole thing. I, I, I read every single comment. I don't have a real life. I don't have friends. I don't have a job. So I read every comment. Okay, guys? Anyway, thanks for watching. I try to make a video every day. Not so much about Albion Online anymore. Look at all these islands I've got. This is just one character's access to all these different islands. It's, it's so fun. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys. This could be you one day. Just like, I know this doesn't look like a lot, 27 million, but my wealth is spread throughout multiple accounts. Um, it's also spread throughout items like 225 million in this chest, 34 million in that chest, and I've got just count. This is just one island out of hundreds, man. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put all this stuff back up now, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Might be another game you play. Who knows? Take care, lads. I appreciate you watching.